uh, is Ebenezer on the call? Ebenezer? Yes, I'm here. Hello? I'm here. Okay. All right. Uh, what did you need? Do you need something? Well, uh, I, uh, later, to, uh, I don't remember when. After 5 o'clock, uh, I sent you another couple of panelists. One is uh, uh, Aldo Trevino. He needs to get a separate uh, panelist link. And uh, Julio Batista. Yes. Did, Aldo is on the attendees. So I'm going to bring him as a, as a uh, panelist at this time. So he's going to okay. be there in queue. Uh, promote to panelists. So Aldo is a panelist now. Julio okay, is great. not there yet. All right. Did, mm. uh, have you sent him the link? Whom? To Julio. I don't know. You, you asked me to send it to him? At what time? Yeah, I don't know. A little after five when, when they told me right. that he would be coming. Okay. I, I, was, I was driving here home to make sure that I was here on time to get your meeting in mm. order. Uh, I can send it. Yeah, I, I, that's not a problem. Mimi, I'll right, be great. right back in a minute. Yeah, yeah, you better not disappear. I want. Uh, um, so we are waiting. Up, we are gonna wait. Uh, be waiting a few minutes. When? What? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we need to get a, uh, we need to get some more people on board. The, uh, uh, Ebenezer is is uh, are the only committee members present. Uh, uh, Tanya and me. OC. I'm OC here. is there too. OC, OC and is Sal uh, Sally yeah. Fisher is is there with us now. All good. OC. Uh, OC, where are you? In some foreign land? No, I'm in Israel. Well, yes, that's a foreign land. <laughs> <That's her. laughs> oh, oh my God! So, how so many? I, what, what? 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 What time is it there? It's it. It's one thirty in the morning. I had to put oh. an alarm clock. Wow! Oh my God! Wow! Well, thank you oh so God. much. Wow! Yeah. It is oh, a privilege kidding. to have you. Yeah. That's dedication. That's that's dedication. That is dedication. We appreciate it. Thank you. Everyone else is in district. You got up. Uh, um, where are you guys? Tanya? Yeah. Washington Heights. My neighborhood. <laughs> that's great. Uh, look at that. OC is really looking mysterious in the dark. Uh, I know. You know uh, yeah. I think she, she could be on a spy mission or something, you know? Ooh. Reminds me of that movie, you know, the Blair Witch Project, when they had yeah. the flashlight under the chin and they were in oh, the yeah, garden. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah, that's exactly yeah, not, lighting too. It was. Yeah, oh not God. that I really know. What, not that I really know anything about that movie, but okay. Um, <laughs> you gotta see it, Steve. It was classic. It's classic. It is. <laughs> I'm just grabbing some water real quick. And if you need to grab water, tea, or coffee, please do it while we for the remainder or snack. All right. Well, I, I would like to at least get a, a few more people here. Um, you know they uh, had have, the premiere of the that. I know of the of the Coogan's movie. Yeah, I think I can't believe. Maybe I can't believe I'm missing it. I know. I, I think you need to promote uh, Sally. Sally needs to be promoted to panelist. Ebenezer? Steve, did you hear me? Yeah, I, I heard you. Ebenezer, are you there? Okay. Yeah, I don't see I don't see Sally on the list of... Uh... She's there now. She's here now. She's okay. here now. Yeah. Thanks. So, Steve, oh, no, I was going to actually go to Premiere and try and hide the fact that I was there and just listen. But I I think the film is available at other times. You can watch it. Mm -hmm. Sally just want to be seen at this doc at the premiere. That's all. She wants to get all gussied up. That's right. I, I, I don't think it. I don't think it's that type of premiere. <laughs> No, Steve, no. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, shoot. Where is everybody? We are missing a lot of people. This is, uh, this is very unusual. We have... Uh, 
We have no regular attendees at this point. Is everyone knew that the starting time is uh, 6 30? Well, well you so. know, at first they put out a seven o'clock. Right. Yeah. And then, I, yeah, so that probably confused people. And maybe the attendees. Now, the, the committee members know we're 6 30, but everybody else wouldn't know that, you know. So that could be it too, Steve. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, at the moment, we have 10 panelists, and four of them are from the health department. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. So, Steve, I got here and I thought that the Armory vaccination card will release me off quarantine. They couldn't care less. They sent me to get uh, antibody test. Really? Yeah. The they, vaccination they is not is not uh, a way to get out of quarantine. So I had they, to go get they, tested. They they don't trust uh, vaccinations in the United States. They don't care about any country's vaccination card or anything. Really? And I no, had no, no. antibody no, no, no. test from New York, and they couldn't care less. It's like nope. Really? Yeah. Well, they're being uh, extra cautious. Yeah. Oh, and also, Steve, the other meeting that's going on tonight at the same time right. with the right. armory. Yeah, right. That that could also draw some people. I hate that too. we're we should be. They should have the housing and us separate on separate days because sometimes it overlaps. There are things that. Human services and us, we overlap, and it's just like it's just a shame that they have it at the same time. And and you know, so uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Ebenezer, I want to talk to you about that because if we're doing Zoom meetings, you know, maybe we could um, we could uh, you know do it on different nights. Yeah, I actually, Steve, I asked in the general meeting, I asked Ariel to ask some questions of Doctor O'Gary or whatever his name is like to explain what they do, because I still don't get it. Right, um, right. So I might jump over there just to ask the question so they're on the record at least, or so someone has to hear them, because I want to know how many people they employ, they apparently, um, how many people they've enrolled in each of the programs. They apparently got space from Inwood Community Services. Um, I don't know if they're well, using They're supposed to be doing well, something at IS-52. They um well, apparently well, they, they I, get I don't... people in the summer because they're they get SYEP people and they're paid to go there. I mean, so well, I guess I could be around Dr. Gary if you paid me enough. Um, yeah. oh wait, I shouldn't I, say I that. I'm I'm, 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 t I'm told uh, that they don't really have a, re a connection with Inwood Community Services. Yeah. And uh, but, and and um, and it was either at the general meeting or it must have been the general meeting. Uh, that he uh, that one of his people said that uh, they don't have a location right now. They're only operating virtually. Right. Well, I just I think it's totally inappropriate that they're included in that resolution. I'm just I'm so sick of hearing from that organization. But also, we're not lawyers. This is a legal matter. So. Oh yeah, yeah, and he's and he's yeah, he's, uh, yeah, and he, he's yeah, he's suing uh, he's suing the city over that eviction. So let let them. Uh, let them yep. hash it out in court. Yep. Oh, uh, gosh. Now, we had an email chain in um, the parks thing that was included in. It didn't go to everyone, but where, so, where it's like a community garden wasn't getting along with their neighbor or vice versa. You don't know yeah, how I many percent. It's like unbelievable. I'm telling you, probably well, I tell, uh, over there. I know there's some people that's over there on that other meeting. I can guarantee yeah. you, because it's interest. It's a, it's of interest to them. Well, that meeting doesn't well, start. Till some of them have. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Some of them were on that committee before coming over to ours. So right. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well. Betty Lehman told me that she might be late uh, 
uh, to uh, the meeting tonight. She was having some kind of outpatient uh, surgery uh, earlier today. And I guess Barbara Frazier is uh, still uh, recuperating, or uh, is she is she at home or in a nursing home? Do we know? She was oh. on uh, traffic and transportation on Monday. I saw her. Oh, yeah. oh she, she was? Oh, okay. She was, she was involved in something the other day with Ring, so I think she must be home. Okay. Okay. Well, then... Uh, well, then we're, we're waiting for uh, for, for Betty, Daryl, Catherine, Barbara, and Jay. Gosh. By the way, Steve, shout out to uh, the Parks Department. They're doing the Native Plant Chair um, on Saturday. So it was nice to have that resource. Yeah. Steve? God, what's going on um, here? Steve, do you know if the representative from um, the hospital will be in at the meeting tonight? Yeah, yeah. Julio Batista is supposed to be uh, uh, coming to this meeting. I'm talking about the one well, came we haven't the seen him in a while. That we are answering that we are asking for so long. I know. Yeah. Well, no, they're they're, they're not coming, and I and I sent them another email to today trying to reiterate uh, those requests. Steve, do you know Hi. May is Mental Health Awareness Month? So this is very appropriate. Uh, perfect, perfect. Oh. It's also um, National Donor Month. Mm. So if you haven't signed up to be an um, organ donor, this is the time. I'll put my name back on. I took it off under Trump. <laughs> you took it? I'll, I'll put it took, back now. Thank you. You took it off? I, I, you I took did. it off? Uh, yes, I did. You took it off because of Trump? Yes, I did. Yeah, we... We we probably uh, if something were to happen to you, we probably would have needed your organs more than uh, uh, more than before. With uh, yeah, they probably tried to harvest them anyway. I'm oh, fine now. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking no chances. I, yeah. I was gonna suggest um, we can we if you guys like we can actually start um, in uh, the next couple of minutes, and we can always yes. arrange another training, another I'm sorry presentation. I'm like it's not yeah, a problem. I, yeah, are, are, you, uh, are, you, uh, are you are you serious about that? Because um, I, I think um, I'm very embarrassed by the turnout here. So I, I think uh, I'm, I really might want to take you up on that offer. Yeah. Um, we, well, you, would you are you guys interested in staying and we do it we do it now and um, and then we could do another one or are you saying to reschedule it all together? No, I would like to. Well, it's up to Steve. I would like to hear it, but um, uh, well, I don't. Let me let me poll uh, the members. Um, uh, uh, Tanya, what, what what would you prefer right now? Should we go ahead with the presentation? Um, I'm torn because this is such an important topic that I think the committee needs to be present to hear. And it just, but I also feel like, uh, you know, they know we're meeting, but I don't know. Sally, I, I don't know. I'm I just guess my of, feeling is that the committee needs to hear it. The public needs to hear it. If you could schedule another thing, yeah. it wouldn't have to be a public session because this is the time for the public to hear it. So, I mean, I, I sort of, um, def you know, I guess I should defer to our chairman, but um you know, I can go either way, but if we have to do it another time so that the public could also hear it, then we'd have to wait till next month. Yeah, um, yeah we, we would can... have to wait. Yeah, we would um, wait till next month. Steve, maybe we can start with a non-presentation item and then go back to the presentation, just change the order on the agenda. Oh, oh, that's a, maybe a good idea. Um, oh. Yeah, maybe we should. Maybe we could have Pauline. Or Aldo, what, how do you feel? And uh, yeah, Kyra and uh, Mimi, how do you? How would you feel if we, uh, if we uh, maybe moved you a little later down on the agenda, to, uh, in the hope that more people will show up? Uh, well, um, well, uh, just to let you know that. Um, Hi, Aldo. We are hello, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let you know, how, good evening, everybody. My name is Aldo Khan. I'm an outreach coordinator. Um, I coordinated this uh, presentation with, with Steve. Uh, we're from uh, the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here. I understand we're, we're missing a lot of members. 
Um, just want to say that our um, uh, trainers are in a, a very fixed schedule. So that's why we can't go further than, uh, you know, the hour that we uh, uh, are, are scheduled for unless uh, oh. anything else. So that's why I would recommend to, to start. Um, and also, um, I know, Steve, we didn't talk about this, but uh, the, the presentation cannot be recorded, and that's uh, because of the uh, candor that sometimes occurs during the presentation or the sharing at, during the Q&A. So um, I just wanted to bring that that up. I, I had no um, idea that it was going to be recorded. Um, yeah, well, well, I think that uh, that uh, we may have to discuss that afterwards because that is an issue for us. For you? Cause every, every, yeah, because, uh, you know, we're... Um, this is a public body, and every, everything we do you know, is, oh, is being recorded. recorded. Yeah, you know, and, is, and, it, and so. is then then posted. It's, um, law. it's, it's then posted okay. on like a YouTube site. All all of our meetings at this point. Mm. 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 Yeah, we have to do everything in the sunshine. What they say, you know, we can't <laughs> do things outside of people's being able to know and see and observe. You know. No, no, yeah. I, I I completely understand, and and uh, I just. It is because of the uh, topic and during the uh, Q&A that sometimes people share about their grief. And out of that, we, we, uh, we don't record because- uh, Well, maybe, could we instruct, um, could we, you know, we've noted that. So can we instruct people that anything they say is gonna be recorded? So unless you wanna be reading about it, um, or seeing yourself live or your voice, um, not to make personal comments. Yeah, why, why don't we do that? Um, all right, so, um, all right, so I don't know. <laughs> yes, uh, maybe, no, we should, maybe, we, maybe, we should, maybe we should just get started. And uh, I mean, we, now that we have all of you here, and um, I, I apologize that we don't have more people to uh, listen to the presentation. Um, so, um, so I'll, I'll, uh, I guess I'm, let me call the meeting to order at, um, uh, 747, uh, uh Ebenezer, is this, is this the point at which we start recording? Okay. We've been recorded already. You, you've been recording everything we've been saying up to now? Yes. Yes. Oh, brother. Okay. Um. Uh, maybe we could do some editing before it gets posted on YouTube. Um, all right. Uh, so Aldo, you wanted to make some opening remarks? Yeah, just uh, one one issue. Um, um, Jakaida, would you you were going to say something? So I'm confused, Aldo. Um, I didn't know that we were a lot. That I I didn't think we I didn't know we were allowed to be recorded. So that's why I'm a little bit confused right now. Yes. And I'm glad uh, you're here. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was going to mention that. That I think. Uh, I, I understand the, the rules for the community board and the way that uh, the, 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 um, uh, the, the, your meetings are scheduled. Um, however, we are not allowed to record. So I think that the best thing to do right now is definitely to uh, postpone um, if, if because of the, the rules and regulations with community board 12, and then we can come back. Um, it, it would even fit uh, better that we can come back. Uh, we would have more of, our, of uh, the uh, community mem um, of the uh, committee members, and also we can um, clarify if we can be if the presentation can be recorded. Um, it was established uh, not to record because of sensibility, so such a sensitive uh, matter and issues and for uh, the participants' uh, confidentiality. respect and confidentiality, uh, that is why we are, are not allowed to record. So I think that um, that said, um, maybe we, we should, as, as some of the members uh, mentioned, to postpone and, and do uh, uh, the presentation um, next month, and the, and we can be more clear in terms of the issue of being recorded. Is that um, yeah? Just understand that we don't have a choice. It's the open meetings law. 
Yeah. Right. It's yeah. not CB12. Yeah. It's New York City. Oh, oh New York City. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 you know, I'm, this yeah. is uh, new I for apologize. me. And I, I apologize. We just uh, did not discuss that mm -hmm. beforehand. Uh, we right. completely understand uh, and uh, understand the uh, guidelines. And, um, but we can come back with uh, a, a different, uh, uh, if, if, the, if, it, if it's authorized for us to be able to do the recording. Yes, I agree with the uh, order. And, uh, okay. Yeah, I heard that uh, our contents are not shareable and our uh, PowerPoints are not shareable. And also this uh, presentation is not uh, allowed the public to be recorded, right? So we better to, you know, to do this later in the future when we have a agreement on both sides. Um, all right. Well, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll be in the, uh, I guess Aldo will be in touch and, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have to try to sort this thing out, um, yes, over the definitely. next uh, couple of weeks, hopefully. Yes. And I, I apologize to, to the committee members, uh, that, uh, you know, that because of that issue, uh, but then at, at the same time we can give, um, uh, I am going to share with everyone, um, the uh, other uh, we have we have open presentations uh, where um, you know you can join some of these uh, presentations or the trainings as well and I will put it in the chat uh, so that you can also if you want to uh, take this uh, presentation or training uh, we have several dates that are open uh, for the general public and that way you, you can uh, also experience this presentation. I, I heard that Ms. Bonner also uh, has taken the, the presentation and, and she was uh, very satisfied with it. And that's uh, why I'm very sad right now. I'm sorry, Ms. Oh, oh, Bonner, me too, I'm terribly I sorry. am too. There, there is that issue that uh, it cannot be recorded. And I, I'm terribly sorry, uh, you know, uh, for that. And um, I apologize, I greatly apologize. Uh, but I will. So, 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 so I'll, I'll, you're saying the pre the presentation, your PowerPoint presentation itself, can uh, cannot be recorded. Not just like the dialogue that might ensue afterwards, uh, uh, which which maybe I can understand on some level. But the the presentation itself, uh, which you're about to, which you would be giving, that cannot be recorded either. Well, yes. Uh, it it, it uh, the the guidelines for for this presentation. Uh, and right. also for the training is not to be recorded. Uh, really? One, one, the most okay. important issue is confidentiality for those who are participating. Um, right. And um, that, that was the, the main issue because uh, of the uh, topics that we discuss. Some people feel that um, they, they are unable to share because they're being recorded. The other issue in which was Mimi mentioned is that the uh, the the presentation the PowerPoint presentation as such um, is not is we also it's not shareable but that's not the main issue the main issue is confidentiality for those participating and that's why uh, the guidelines right. were uh, okay. for, for this presentation were determined not to record and I, okay. I greatly I, I okay. apologize oh, right. wait who's right, well, participating I, I other than us here yeah. right now in this meeting well, um okay, well, we apologize but we also have policies and procedures just like you guys right. um also have that and we have to right, follow okay. it and there's no exceptions okay. i okay. i understand but i need to understand who else is participating other than us here in this meeting tonight well well at the, mo at the moment we have a couple of members of the public as well but um um you know i i, I hope we can sort this out over the next couple of weeks otherwise uh it seems like an intractable uh, situation. All right. Well, uh, uh, um, well, it was nice meeting the three of you. Um, yeah, and, uh, and and hopefully we'll see you again next month. And uh, after after we can after we sort this out, and uh, we'll we'll move uh, we'll move on with the agenda. I will also right, put my email address on here. Um, if anyone okay. is interested in receiving the resources, um, as is one of the things that's much needed right now. Um, I, I wouldn't mind, I would love to share the resources. I don't mind um, sending an email 
um, if that helps, I mean, I apologize yeah. as well. And I was also excited okay. and looking forward to this. Um, yeah, um, uh, Aldo, Aldo can uh, give me uh, give you my email and uh, you can uh, send it to me and I'll forward it as well uh, to all of the uh, committee members. Okay. All righty. Thank, thank you very much. Again, okay, we thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. It was great speaking thank with you. you. Stay well, please. Okay. Take care, everyone. Yes, very, Stay well. Very Be good. safe. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you so Bye. much. Aussie, take care over there. Sorry. Where are you guys going to put? Weren't you guys going to put into the chat when when the sessions were? Um, it's already there. The the open yeah. presentations. Um, I think Jakaira Mimi already placed it there. So you can see that um, there's different links and all of them contain um, either the one hour presentation or the three hour training, okay. uh, both. If someone on the committee could copy that for me because I just logged in with my computer so I don't get the old chat. Uh, all right, well, well uh, uh, if you guys could also email it to me, uh, it'll make my life a little easier, okay? All right, thank you, Aldo. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank you. All right, all right, take care. Thank you. Bye -bye. Oh, hopefully we'll see you next month. Yes. Yes, we will. You. Let's make that happen. All right. So now, well, okay, very good. All right. So uh, let me give you um, uh, now my uh, uh, monthly report on uh, uh, the uh, uh, the impact of COVID nineteen on um, on our district. Um, uh, the uh, positivity uh, rates have improved uh, dramatically uh, since we met uh, uh, last month. The um, uh, the figures are. Um, uh, you know, uh, last month, every every uh, zip code was over 5% uh, in, in its positivity rate. And uh, right now, uh, uh, they're all under uh, 3%, and uh, two of them are under 2%. So zip code 40 is at 2.51%, uh, uh, 31 new cases in the week ending uh, Monday, uh, yesterday. No, no, Monday, not yesterday. Um, uh, zip code 34, 2.11%, with 24 new cases. Zip code 33. 1.47 percent, 25 new cases. Uh, zip code 32, 1.42 percent, uh, 29 uh, uh, new cases. Um, so 109 uh, new cases uh, uh, in that uh, uh, one-week period ending on Monday. Uh, so the total cases now for our community uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, 18,043 total deaths, uh, 650. Um, and uh, so since we met last month, uh, 22 more of our neighbors have uh, passed away. And uh, there have been, um, I think, roughly um, uh, 1,200 or so, uh, exactly maybe 1,200 uh, uh, new cases. Uh, the uh, vaccination um, uh, uh, rates have uh, increased uh, uh, measurably uh, since a month ago. Uh, a month ago, uh, all four zip codes uh, we're at around uh, uh, between 30 and 35 percent in terms of adults with at least one dose and uh, at around 20, uh, between uh, 19 and 23 percent with adults fully vaccinated. Just one month later, uh, every one of our zip codes is at around 50 percent, between 49 and 53 percent on uh, adults with at least one dose and uh, adults fully vaccinated uh, between uh, 39 and uh, 43 percent. I am now. Uh, I, I make up my own chart now. Uh, 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 I go through this uh, about three, uh, t at least three times a month, and updating these figures. And uh, I do it uh, before we have our committee meetings, before we have uh, our general board meetings, and uh, I do it for the executive committee. I sent you uh, the uh, chart that I just made up today with the figures I write off. Uh, and so every every. Uh, Committee members should now have have these figures, and I'm uh, and I'm going to continue to do this um, so that we can stay on top of this and uh, and know uh, exactly how our community is doing. Um, uh, Pauline, uh, now I'm really glad that you chose to join us tonight because um, we certainly now need your report. Um, so uh, Pauline Ferranti, uh, our uh, borough liaison at the Department of uh, Health and Mental Hygiene. Uh, 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 please give us your report. Uh, 
Sure. Hi, good evening, everyone. So nice to be here. I'm sorry that you weren't able to hear that training um, from the CPE unit or CEP unit, I guess they're called. Um, so as Steve mentioned, the positivity rates across the city are at 2.52%, uh, the seven day average, which is good. We're trending in the right direction. Everything is on a decreasing trend, which is good to hear. Um, the seven day new confirmed case rate for New York City as a whole is 769. Um, the seven day average hospitalizations per 100,000 um, people is 1.51 per 100k residents and the vaccination data is um, we have administered 6,809,409,400 um, doses um, and 2,779,992 people are considered fully vaccinated which is great however we know that there's still a lot of work to be done to get information out to many of our communities that are still, um, you know, concerned about the safety and the efficacy of the vaccines. And so we still have our work cut out for us in reaching those communities and making sure that accurate and helpful information is shared with folks. Um, as of yesterday, there was some pretty exciting news about Pfizer being approved shortly, hopefully by next week for folks 12 um, to 15, which is a great um, addition to um, people who will now be eligible to receive their vaccines. So um, the health commissioner outlined a, a three-pronged approach to get adolescents vaccinated, which is to leverage clinics and hospitals that already have Pfizer on hand to prepare them um, for this age group, to work with pediatricians who might not have been part of the current vaccination efforts, um, to get them on board quickly, and um, three, to work with the New York City Department of Education to communicate um, to parents through very familiar school channels. So that's something that that we are very interested in making sure um, we are all coordinated on this effort to make sure that those folks um, 12 to 15 um, can receive their vaccinations and that their parents are comfortable um, bringing their children to go get vac vaccines. Um, so those are the main updates that we have currently that we're working on. Again, you know, to, throughout the COVID pandemic, um, we really had to prioritize our messaging. And because older New Yorkers were more um, heavily impacted by COVID-19 disease and had negative outcomes um, and death, all of our messaging really had to focus on the most vulnerable of New Yorkers. Now that we're sort of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, but we are also seeing younger folks being a little bit more hesitant about receiving the vaccine. I think we're working on a lot of new messaging um, or, or thinking about ways in which we can reach younger New Yorkers, um, that younger age group, so that they're more aware of how their um, choices really do affect the community at large. So if you all have any suggestions for us on how better to do this messaging, we would greatly appreciate your feedback. Um, and again, we are doing our best to make sure that we are getting information out into the community. We know that there was a slight setback with the J&J &J pause um, that created a lot of confusion and a lot of, um, you know, if people weren't hesitant before, they became hesitant after the pause. And so we really want to get information out there that, you know, over 8 million doses of the J&J &J vaccine were administered across the country. There were 15 cases that were being investigated through due to that um, blood clotting um, situation. And so we want people to know that it was fully investigated. The CDC, the FDA, um, all of the monitoring boards and panels have recommended to resume usage, which the city has resumed um, using the j, j vaccine, and that we do still continue to, um, you know, to, to to feel confident in its safety and its efficacy. So we want people to understand um, that it's not something that, you know, anyone took lightly. I think we should all feel confident that all the all of the mechanisms and safety mechanisms that were in place worked. 
um, that there was that pause just out of an abundance of caution for um, the health and safety of Americans and that now we can feel very confident that we're all moving forward um, using the J&J &J vaccine. So I think, um, again, though, our work is cut out for us and we really do appreciate any suggestions that the community has on how we can better um, you know, serve the community in giving accurate, helpful information to people, especially parents, especially immigrant parents, um, you know, where a lot of times we, we, we know I being a first generation immigrant child, you know, I was oftentimes asked to help assist in sharing information with my parents. And so how are we going to be able to leverage, you know, younger folks and, and the youth in getting them that information, but also giving them the tools that they can advocate on their own behalf, but also share with their parents um, who may be a little more skeptical about why they're interested in receiving the vaccine and, and having their parents bring them um, to get vaccinated. So these are all the things that we're working on. Um, and I am happy to take any questions. Uh, could you just repeat for me uh, that uh, 2 million figure on the number of people uh, fully vaccinated? Sure. So as of today at um, 9.30, 2 million 779,900, am I, am I saying this correctly? <laughs> 2,779,992 people. I can put it in the chat. Vaccinated. Have been fully vaccinated. Are considered fully vaccinated in New York. Well, um, well. but over you know six point eight million doses have been administered, which is pretty great. Uh -huh. um, I know that the Biden administration wants to get at least seventy percent of Americans vaccinated by July fourth, which will be right. a lot right. of work on all of our parts. But I think that's something that we can all sort of band together and try to work on um, together as as New Yorkers, as, as well as Americans. So 71,000 roughly of the uh, 2.8 million New Yorkers fully vaccinated are Washington Heights Inwood residents. Um, uh, we'll have to figure out what that percentage might be. Uh, O.C., uh, you have a question or a comment? Yeah, but you just answered that. I just wanna make a comment about the J&J um, &J vaccine. I think one of the issues that um, when the pharmaceutical companies coming up with not just vaccination, but also medications, they, the subject are male, not females. And that's one of the problems that I'm not sure if you can answer on that and, and tell us if they change the way they do it in the trial, you know, stage or when the medication or vaccination is being, um, studied. Yeah, I think we do have information about the clinical trials, and they are pretty evenly split among ma male and female um, volunteers. And I think they tried their best to make sure that all ethnic groups were included or as reflective as the American population as possible. Um, let me see if I can actually try and pull up that information as we are chatting um so i can i can give that to you hang on one second i have to pull out another computer hold on uh, well while we have a pause uh, for all those interested uh washington i'd say would uh, represents 2.5 percent of the uh, new york city adults who are now uh, fully vaccinated that's pretty bad no i think that's pretty good Sorry, Steve, what was that number again? Uh, about 2.5%. Which were uh, hit the mm. hardest. Uh, we I'm with those. Clear with the claims at that point. Uh, specifically looking what is this? The Federal Reserve's uh, own report we're talking about. Um, all of the New York City run sites are now walk up. So you can just walk right up to a city run site for an appointment um, or to get vaccinated. You don't need an appointment. They are still taking appointments because some people obviously feel much more comfortable knowing that they have an appointment. Um, but again, city run sites are walk up. 
And, um, you know, more and more availability is, is there are more routes to get your vaccine. So primary care physicians, um, you know, other neighborhood clinics. And, and again, as the health commissioner mentions, trying to get pediatricians on board as well to get um, their dosage uh, shipped to them as soon as possible. Is the uh, does someone have a, a, does someone have a radio on? Historically had a higher uh, level of unemployment. Well, what, what am I hearing in the back? I'm hearing some background noise. Does someone yes. have a radio on? Okay. Do we All know right, what's I'm, going I'm sorry. on with the armory? Uh no, no, that's one of my questions for Julio. Uh, uh, when uh, hopefully Julio will, will be joining us. Um, I'm on here. He's on. Oh, 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 Julio is here. Very good. Yes, I am. Um, uh, well, I tell you, um, can, can you just, uh, well, I'll call on you in just a moment, uh, uh, okay? Um, uh, but any, any, uh, Pauline, did you have something else? She's searching an answer for me. So, oh, okay. um, yeah, I, I do have the breakdown of the race and ethnicity of all the participants in the trials. I don't have on hand right now the, um, the gender breakdown, but if I can just you know, take a moment of your time. So for Pfizer, over 40,000 participants in the US and other countries participated in the clinical trials. 21% um, of the participants were 65 and older. And of the 40,000 participants, 26% um, were Latino, 10% were Black, and 4% were Asian. For Moderna, over 30,000 people participated in clinical trials in the US. 25% um, of those were over the age of 65. 20% of those participants were Latino, 10% Black, and 5% Asian. And for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, over 40,000 participants in the US and other countries participated. 20 of the 20 percent of those participate participants were 65 and older and the racial um, breakdown for the Johnson and Johnson vaccine were 45 percent Latino 19 percent black 10 percent American Indian Alaskan Native and three percent Asian so that's the racial um, and ethnic background um, and breakdown I will look into the um, specific gender breakdown and I will share that with the I will share that with Steve um, to be sure with the with the committee. Yeah, do, do me a favor because uh, I couldn't uh, follow all of that. Could you also, do, when you get a chance, send me uh, all of those numbers on the ethnic and racial breakdowns? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's very useful. Thank you. Sure. All right. A anything else for uh, Pauline? Um, all right. So I also have a report from uh, uh, from uh, Pauline's colleague uh, Padmore John. Um, well, is Pat Moore now at a, 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 what is he now, an acting assistant commissioner? Has he been promoted? I believe so, a well-deserved promotion, um, but I don't know exactly what his full title is at this time. Uh, okay, well, I think I saw he's now an acting uh, assistant commissioner. Yes. Uh, but uh, he's also running the uh, uh, the Harlem, uh, 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 the outreach program based in Harlem. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the health action center. Right, the health action center. So... Mm -hmm. um, uh, and undoubtedly, uh, whatever uh, whatever um, promotion he received was based on his uh, prior uh, presentations to this committee. Um, but wouldn't, wouldn't you agree, Pauline? Um, so, um, uh, so his his uh, his report to me, he, he, what he wanted me to convey uh, to the members of the committee is that uh, uh, this uh, some basic information um, uh, from the CDC about what you can do after being vaccinated. Uh, you can remove your mask when outdoors. If you're not in a crowd, you can gather with other vaccinated people in private indoor spaces. Uh, there's no need to get tested unless you have symptoms of COVID-19 or unless it's needed for another reason, such as work, school, or travel. And there's no need to quarantine if you're exposed to someone with COVID-19. So uh, all of these are... Uh, are reasons why you should want to get vaccinated. Uh, and uh, what should you still do when fully vaccinated? Uh, you should wear a mask in most settings outside the home. You should stay home if sick or test or you test positive for COVID-19. You should wash your hands and you should still maintain uh, uh, six foot of, uh, of social distancing. If you're not vaccinated, 
What should you continue to do? You should keep getting tested regularly. You should always wear a mask when outside the home. You should stay home if sick or you test positive for COVID-19 or were recently exposed to someone with COVID-19. You should wash your hands. You should maintain six feet of social distancing. You should avoid gatherings and crowds, even outside. And you should avoid unnecessary uh, travel. So those are uh, uh, basic uh, tips on how you should conduct yourself, uh, whether you've been vaccinated or, or whether you have uh, not yet, uh, and I uh, deliberately use the word yet, uh, whether you have not yet been vaccinated. Um, uh, uh, Julio, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, yeah. uh, 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 you have a, a, a report to give us on behalf of uh, New York Presbyterian Hospital. Sure. So let me uh, start off with giving you um, basically a snapshot of the hospital. Um, right now, we have uh, about 300. Uh, well, I'll say right now, as of a, a couple of days ago, we had 370 inpatients um, at the hospital uh, for COVID related. So that's a little bit less than uh, a little, almost about 100 than, than what we had a, a couple of days before that. Um, we have a little bit less. Uh, than, that, 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 that's a hundred more than what you had no, just no, a few less. days ago. One hundred less. Oh, I'm sorry. Than what we had. Um, and also, cause, we have because uh, uh, a, a month ago you, uh, we were told you had about a hundred fifty. Mm. Is is the three seventy a system wide or just this the a, uh, at the Allen and system, Mill State? This, no, no, this is system wide, uh, meaning oh. all hospitals. Oh, so you that's know, uh, the Delta uh, hospital. And, and also so with like, that. Uh, this, at the same figure, we have less. Uh, we have almost about 100 uh, patients who are uh, on ventilators. So it's the numbers are coming down, um, you know, which is a good thing. However, I think also, you know, you just mentioned from the previous report, uh, you know, we we must still remain vigilant and and guarded, um, you know, by the fact that you know, it's great the numbers are coming down, but we still need to do a lot more. Um, I know you had expressed interest in the armory. Um, the armory, we are uh, winding down operations at the armory. Uh, we are seeing just uh, second dose patients um, at the, you know, the location. We're closing the armory on Saturday, um, May 15th. That will be the last day um, uh, for there. Uh, our operations has been uh, really shifted toward Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital where we're doing vaccinations there. Um, and we're doing vaccination there on Tuesdays, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays um, from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then on Saturdays from 3 to 7 p.m. Um, by appointment, uh, again, uh, that doesn't mean that if someone walks in, uh, we're not going to turn them away. Um, the demand, as you know, and I believe Pauline may have referenced, uh, are low. They are dropping uh, considerably. Um, I saw that the armory when... We were still given the first dose. Um, the walk-in rates, the appointment rates were, were dropping, unfortunately. Um, even though we've moved to the uh, Children's Hospital, we still continue to uh, rely on the NIMIC call center, which is 464-838-0319. Uh, asking people to still call, make appointments. We uh, starting, you know, st still promoting it, and you know, we welcome new ideas from this committee in terms of how we broaden that outreach to uh, get people uh, to get people vaccinated. Vaccinations are also being uh, offered at the Black Building, which is at 650 West 168th Street, and that's from 8 a.m. to 3:30 p.m. And of course, you know, we're also offering the vaccine to our patients at most of our. Um, ACN clinics as well. So uh, while the Armory uh, was the only location, we now have various locations within Community Board 12 uh, where residents can, in fact, get, um, get their vaccine. Um, so so, at, so, you, you, so the, at the Black Building, you, you're giving vaccines to the uh, general public? Uh, from, every, from, 16, from 16 up. At from both 60 locations. Up? If, 16 years and, and older. Oh, oh, oh uh, 16, both, 16 years old and up, yeah. Yeah, both at the Morgan and, and at the Black Building. 
and, and at the black and at the black building, it's every it's seven it's, seven days a week. No, I believe the the black building is Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, from eight Tuesday. to three p.m. Eight to three thirty or three. Three thirty. Three thirty, and uh, at uh, at the uh, children's hospital, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, nine a.m. to seven, and on Saturdays, three to seven. Is that correct? Right. Yes, that is correct. And uh, and at most of the ACN uh, uh, practices, that 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 would you know we we are calling patients to come in, um, for you know for those ACN clinics to come in and get vaccinated. So these are the the ACN clinics will be for our patients. For, for your patients, okay. Right. For, right. Which are which are you know mostly you know areas of you know community members. Yes. Steve, there are a couple of questions. There are people with their hands up. Well, okay, okay. Yeah, let me just ask. Well, let me just ask. Like, you know, something happened to my screen. I lost it. Um, but uh, we, uh, do, do you have a number of how many uh, inpatients uh, you, you have it, uh, at at uh, Milstein and at Allen of those three seventy? So, Steve, I know you've asked these numbers before. Um, unfortunately, the numbers are not broken down into individual campuses, but it's is accumulated in terms of the um, hospital-wide well, um, system. Well, they, well, they, Ann Sperling did have a number last month. Um, and and, uh, and do, do you have numbers of uh, for each of our four zip codes now of how many people have been vaccinated uh, uh, through uh, the Armory I, and uh, the other efforts? Right, I, I could get you for the next meeting, I could get you the numbers in terms of the vaccination for our, for our zip codes up here. That would include yes. the Black Building, Morgan Stanley, and the Armory. Sure. I mean, as long as people are getting vaccinated, I mean, yeah, that's well, what counts. Yeah, they are. But as I mentioned, though, the numbers are, are not really reflective of the population up here. I mean, they're, the numbers are, are dropping. And, you know, right. whatever we can do to spur the community to come in um, will be great. I think we're, you know, we're going to start also making a, a, a push for some of the schools, um, you know, uh, to get uh you know, those, those are, you know, people who are 17, 18, 16, 17, 18 to come in. Um, you know, that the, the uh, Pfizer are gonna be, you know, hopefully within the next few weeks are gonna be also um, uh, approved for younger kids. So, um, you know, we will make those changes when that, you know, when the FDA um, approves that as well. All right, all right. So some uh, I've lost my screen. Somebody has to tell me, uh... Okay. Who's raised hand. I just had a quick question, which is how low did they go when and how did you make the decision? Like at what level? Because we know one that, that more people can get vaccinated. That we will know that we down to 12 can get vaccinated. Um, and the health department just asked us to figure out ways that we could reach out. Things like maybe um, getting the local schools to put out flyers and that kind of stuff. So my question is at what point um, did it does it make sense to consider that before shutting down the armory? Well, the, the armory, the operations of the armory, we've had that, you know, since the beginning of the year. And we have noticed that the, the number of people who are coming in uh, are few. Um, but is that, because you, is that because you were only giving second doses? Second doses of what, I'm sorry? I thought you, I thought the armory was only doing second doses. Correct, the, right okay. now through, so through the 15th. Limit. Okay. Through the 15th, they will only do the uh, second dose. Um, everyone else who's getting first dose are going through other locations, including the Morgan Stanley and the Black Building. Okay. I just, I guess I'm concerned because in some of those, those locations, they're not going to be open to the general public. We know, in fact, there's going to be more demand when the age um, limit drops. And so I just, I'm concerned about losing. I guess what's one of two sites now that people can walk in and get appointments. Well, we is, so is like two point five grade. Uh, okay, as as you know, I, I think, and I believe also this committee had expressed interest in having more sort of decentralized vaccination sites. I think that that is what's taking place now. The you know we've opened the Morgan Stanley. Um, unfortunately. The demand uh, for that, even though it's a smaller site, is is not at, at max capacity. Also, um, you know, because we've had times when people just 
you know, a lot of people come in and get vaccinated, but then there's a lull. And, you know, so we have, you know, sp you know people and staff around waiting, waiting for community members to come in and get vaccinated. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that that's, that's a good time because you know, a lot of people got vaccinated at the Omri um, or now they're going to their ACN clinics um, or, you know, to, uh, you know, the Morgan Stanley uh, or to the Black Belt to get vaccinated. Okay, thanks. Okay, Steve, I had a question. Actually, I have more questions now, but it seems like, uh, Julio, it seems like we're not getting the answers that we're looking for since the vaccinations came out. So I would like to just ask it again so we are clear. Um, we need to know how many people are vaccinated from our communities, from our four zip codes in the armory and in the other location in our district. I'm not sure, I mean, like, it's nice to know how many people you guys are vaccinating in general. It will be nice to know, um, not just percentage, but the number of people that you vaccinate in general and how many of them are people from our district. Okay. So I think we ask it a number of times and we are, um, we're not getting the answers. I guess the hospital is refusing to give us the answer. Well, let me, let me, how, no, 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 let okay. me finish. No, no, no. Let me answer your question though. Is I, that your question? I heard you. I no, heard you have you. not. Let me no, answer no. your question. No, no, no. I want to finish. I would like to finish my, what I want to say. So um, I would like to know, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, what, how many people are got vaccinated from our district in relation to how many people the hospital vaccinated in general um, in the armory? Um, that was one thing. The other thing is how many male, how many females got vaccinated? Um, and also, this was my previous question from four months ago. Um, how many people that could have got um, vaccinated but didn't because the appointments were not available for community members in our district. And you have this number, I know, it's just a question of you providing, hosp the hospital providing the number. Okay, can, can I respond now? So I believe last month, if you know, we presented, uh, Anne Sperley was at this meeting and presented uh, information about the armory presented who got uh, vaccinated from the Northern Manhattan zip codes. Those zip codes also extended to not only Northern Manhattan, uh, which is Community Board 12, but also presented who got vaccinated in Harlem and part of, a, part of the Bronx, which was our designated zip codes to get people within our communities uh, vaccinated. So those figures, as you mentioned, were presented last month at this committee meeting. If you would like an update, I'll be more than happy to provide this committee at next month's meeting, information about an update on those numbers to now include those at the Morgan Standard Children's Hospital and at the Black Building, so you will have updated in what those numbers are. Now, in terms of access to the, uh, to the armory at the very beginning, we all recognize that there was a problem. Uh, I think that, you know, as soon as we saw that, you know, people were coming into those uh, to get vaccinated early on, were people that did not reflect the majority of our community. Um, and that's not to say that, that some of those people did not live in this community, okay? But reflective of our overall community, we immediately partnered with Waikoa with Fern Hertzberg to make sure that our seniors, and I mean, when I mean our seniors, I mean seniors from Community Board 12 have access. And we realized that going through a computer was not a, a viable option for our seniors because it, it, it's, it's very hard for someone who's computer literate to get an appointment, it would be less for seniors. So we partnered with those uh, senior centers to make sure that they had access they had access to be able to provide uh, appointments for our local seniors. On top of that, 
we then expanded this to include community-based organizations and give them the, the ability to schedule local community residents to come into the armory and get vaccinated. And then we went beyond that. We then partnered and provided funding for the North Mahan Kufma Corporation to set up a hotline, which dedicated solely to our zip code areas for those local residents to just pick up a phone, call, and schedule the appointment directly. So, um, you know, in terms of, uh, of hiccups, yes, there were hiccups at the very beginning, uh, but that's not to say that those people who came at the very beginning were now members of this community as well. Okay, I, I didn't say that, but you are well aware that um, you change slightly the way you schedule vaccination because you were called on by the media. It was not from your own free will. No. So, excuse me, once again, I would like to finish my what I want to say. But that's completely you, false. You jump in. It is ex exactly what happened. And in terms of the updates, we need those updates on a monthly basis, not when you know we ask for updates and we are not getting it, and then you coming back, or not just you, also Anna, um, will give you the updates next month. No, you should come prepared to give those updates on a monthly basis. And I would suggest, um, in addition to that, I'll see that they continue throughout the summer, even on break, so we can monitor on that throughout the year. So a, if this committee uh, wants to get an update in terms of the numbers of vaccination, we'll provide that on a monthly basis. Uh, that, you know, not issue. Um, but I, I resent the fact, though, that there is misinformation, however, in terms of saying that, you know, when we started this operation at the Armory, it was a way to set up that it would not, um, it, was, it, would not it would not be for our community. Um, that, that is completely false. Uh, I'm insulted by the fact that the implication is that we would join it, you know, vaccinate, I don't know, you know, folks who are outside this community. Um, because that's not the case. Um, and, and I'm really, you know, offended by the fact to say that we don't care about our immediate community. Oh, I don't care about my immediate community uh, because that's truly uh, not the case. It's not just you, it's you're representing the hospital and if that comes with a territory, but that's not false. And we all know that it's always discovered by the media that, you know, you took care oh, of your um, your patients first, it came from Long Island, came from Westchester and other uh, places, and you didn't really um, make sure or make the effort that members of our community um, get the uh, information and, and the availability of appointments to get vaccinated. We all know that. Uh, also, I think that, again, as, as I repeated at the very beginning, the system we set up it was a computer-based system. It obviously put our community, a majority of our community at a disadvantage. Uh, and we realized that and it was corrected. And we made a lot of efforts to ensure that our community members, whether they're young, whether they have underlying conditions and whether they're seniors would have access to our, uh, to, to the armory for vaccination. So, so I just um, you know, want to finalize, say that uh, you know, when well, the numbers are going down and we are hopeful and it seems that the city wants to reopen and the state wants to reopen, um, you know, we also see um, you know, going forward as a positive thing. And uh, so our Medical Center Nimble Fund is, is in full gear. Uh, we're hoping that uh, you know, this year, unlike last year, we didn't have an event. Uh, but we're hoping that uh, this year we'll be able to do that. And we've done, uh, you know, about 40 applications from local community groups who are soliciting support. And hopefully uh, we will provide that support this year and have uh, an event where we could see at least some of you um, in person. Um, so you, you've already started soliciting applications uh, for the yeah, neighborhood the, fund? Yeah, we have. We received... Uh, uh, I believe it was 39 applications, a little bit of a hundred thousand dollars in, in requests. Um, Steve. All right. I, I, let, let me, uh, before I, Tanya, hold on a moment. Okay. I, I just, um, um, 
uh, when you come back next month, uh, I really would appreciate it if uh, you actually give us real numbers on the vaccinations, because what Dan gave us last month was like a bar graph. It was unclear what the numbers were, and then it didn't quite mesh with, uh, you know, she said something like um, Washington Heights and Inwood represented uh, 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 that Mm -hmm. that 70% of the vaccinations were from the uh, catchment area, uh, which covers Manhattan and the Bronx. 60% of that uh, were presumably uh, Washington Heights and Inwood residents, uh, something along those lines. Okay. Uh, I may not have it exactly, and, but when when you then try to sort that out, it uh, it didn't uh, gel with the uh, uh, with the rough numbers that she gave us. So having actual numbers as uh, as we get from the health department, I think would be uh, uh, mm-hmm. would be a, would be a, would be appropriate. I, I've never understood from the beginning what the hesitancy was in providing uh, uh, actual numbers. Um, so uh, I would appreciate if we could finally get those actual numbers. Uh, mm-hmm. When you come uh, next month, mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, Sa- Sally, do, do you do you have a question for Julio, or uh, is that uh, an old? Yeah, I think she's away, that... but I have a question. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Tanya. Yeah, um, I, I want to just circle back to something with what Ozzy's talking about. But I was I I when you mentioned uh, Julio about you know how you initially rolled it out, it was a computerized sort of based system. I just think that you know. You know, hindsight, of course, is twenty twenty, and 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 this is why community boards are here. We could have been a point of reference, like you know, in terms of you know, getting our advice in terms of how to do this outreach before you do it, right? Like this is what we're here for. So we could have said, you know, a, di- you know, a digital sort of way of doing this, you know, uh, it's not going to work for this particular community because. You know, we have a we have a digital divide here. We have a lot of people who are not online. We have people whose language is is English is not their first language, and and you know we you know so I'm just saying like we're a resource. So mm-hmm. you know, it, it, just in in future, you know, before these things are rolled out, that's why we're here. So come to you know and say, hey, you know, we would like your input on how to roll this out and how to do this. I think a that would have avoided a lot of the controversies, the problems, if that had occurred. Uh, it, you know, it's just my opinion. You know, if we had been asked, because you, you would have heard all of these comments, like, no, we have to do the boots on the ground. Like the computer thing is not gonna work. We have seniors experiencing this and, it's, and we gotta reach them a different way. You know what I mean? So it just, just, it, a little bit of a just word of advice like just use us for the resource that we are yeah. and, and a lot of these problems just can be avoided i think people forget we're here they don't ask us and then they go off and they do whatever and then then they come back after the fact and then they catch heat and it's like it, it's not mm-hmm. it's, it's unpleasant for you it's unpleasant for everybody you know and then it just it's mm-hmm. we're here is what i'm saying we're here as a resource okay we're, we're here and you should use us um, uh, that's, I think, Tanya's message. Yeah, no, um, I understood. All right. And, um, and, and, and really, I also would appreciate getting, uh, um, uh, getting better communication on, uh, on what was going on with the Armory and with the Winter Garden and with the new, uh, uh the new, uh, 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 program with giving out vaccines. It would be good for us to get that message out. And again, you, you should use us. We should, uh, you know, if, if there's a flyer that advertises the uh, the Winter Garden and the Black Building, uh, we, we, the community board should be sending it out. Uh, we should be helping you publicize it. And uh, uh, no, nobody to, up until now has really uh, informed us of uh, of uh, what the um, what the schedule is at either the Winter Garden and uh, and this is now the first time we're hearing that it's all uh, vaccines are also available at the Black Building. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it would be useful again to use the community board mm-hmm. as a uh, uh, not not as the only mechanism, but at least as some as a mechanism to try sure. to reach people in the community. Right, um, and and I and, and I we, do want to say and I do want to say, Steve, I, I do want to thank the board because the board has been, um, you know, very very helpful um, in helping circulate the what we call the palm the palm cards with the uh, hotline. Um, I know that they have um, circulated that a few times. Um, 
through their email list. And, I know, you know, we, we I know but, I, but I tell you, I wanted, I, I, I was on the verge of telling the community board to send it out again last week, and mm -hmm. uh, I was unsure. I, uh, maybe I should have picked up the phone and just called the hotline, but I was unsure whether the hotline was still in existence because yeah. uh, uh, I, I was hearing second, third hand uh, that the armory is being phased out, uh, and I, I didn't know what the story was. So oh. you know, nobody was commu nobody was mm -hmm. telling me. So mm -hmm. uh, I really felt at a, a disadvantage. Uh, mm -hmm. Are they? Uh, I don't see any other hands. Steve, um, uh, Janelle. Uh, no uh, Janelle, um, Edwards yeah, well, Janelle, is saying well, that she can give yeah, well, an update on the neighborhood fund as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. She's our next speaker. Oh, okay. Uh, if, if, once we, once we let Julio off the hook, uh, okay. she can speak next. Um, all right, Julio, thank you very much. Okay, and, thank you, uh, Steve. and, uh, I'm, I'm already uh, slotting you in for next month. So, okay. uh, uh, all right. Then I'm make a note first. of it. It's, it's, oh. it's the first, what is the date? What was that, uh, Tanya? Come to us first next time. Get some no. advice. Okay. Well, yeah. Listen, who, 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 Julio's been uh, uh, Julio's been around for a while. He, you know, but uh, but certainly he should. Uh, uh, you know, he already knows a lot of what we know. But uh, but certainly it would be nice uh, to feel as though uh, uh, we we could also uh, be useful in this endeavor. So uh, the next meeting is Thursday, uh, June the third. Um, uh, Janiel, uh, uh, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Good night, everyone. How are you? Uh, how you doing? I'm doing Julio, right. Julio, Julio was very happy to see you. Um, oh. so, um, <laughs> uh, I'm just here to you know, give a really brief update and answer any questions that you all may have. All right, very good. Uh, 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 you sent me a report earlier. I sent the report out uh, to the committee members. I don't know if they've had a chance to uh, look at it, uh, but... Uh, uh, there were uh, 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 certainly a couple of uh, important items there, so uh, mm -hmm. m maybe you could just maybe you could just go right into it. Okay, sure. So just to um, continue off of what uh, Julia was talking about in terms of the Medical Center Neighborhood Fund, uh, the 2021 application period is now closed. And the initial number I gave him, I went back just to do some due diligence and uh, found that we had other applications. This year, everything was submitted online and typically we have people physically dropping off the applications in office. So it was a transition for not only the community-based organizations, but for us as well to put everything online and to have all the information you know available on a fillable form or a PDF or something along those lines. So we actually have a total of 46 applicants um, and uh, the request, if we're able to fulfill it, will be for over $121,000. So just as a reminder to the committee, um, the funding for the Neighborhood Fund is completely from employees. Uh, it's employee funded and 100% of the money goes back into the community. Um, last year, we were really able to step up and support the food relief efforts because food insecurity um, was a really big problem, not just in uh, CB12, but throughout New York City. And I can say that our employees did step up to the plate in terms of providing um, <clears throat> monetary support um, for those groups that were providing the most food relief. In terms of the other updates that I have, uh, I can well, give you a brief, well, yes. Yeah, Janiel, before we lose, uh, before you uh, move off of this point, uh, the, uh, the uh, what you're saying is that the 46 uh, applications uh, from different community groups, uh, the total the total number of requests are 121,000. That yes, doesn't necessarily that that doesn't that uh, do you have that much money to to uh, disperse? Well, you, you don't already, have that much. I I don't have the exact numbers of what we have um, sitting in the account, but part of the outreach that we do is to help, you know, start raising funds to start raising the profile of the neighborhood fund again, so that we can solicit as many donations as possible. Ross is a real pro at doing that. And I know um, he wants to speak to the committee in person, um, either next month or the following one. So I know that he will definitely be able to speak more about the funding levels that we have in the process. And All right. So, uh, I'm, 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 I'm assuming at the moment that that not everybody is going to get exactly what they requested, uh, as as everything else happens in life. Um, that so, is uh, typically uh, the case. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, Janiel, go. I'm sorry. Go go ahead with your report. Okay. I think Julio was trying to say something. Yeah. I, 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 I was going to say, you know, um, 
last year in 2020, as Janine said, food insecurity was was uh, in great demand. And I have to, you know, really uh, give kudos to um, Janiel, Ross, and Sandra at University because they worked uh, very hard also with their colleagues at the Morningside campus. And they raised, um, you know, way more money than we had ever raised uh, before. Um, and, and I say that because, you know, over, over, if I recall, over $100,000 went really just towards food insecurity. Um, mm -hmm. And then we were able to also raise enough money to support, I believe it was 37 uh, community-based organizations um, that have made requests through the regular fund. So, um, you know, kudos to them. They, you know, it's close to, I, I think it was over $150,000 yeah. that they were able to raise oh. last year. So, oh, really? Um, oh, oh. Yeah, so, so they did a great, great job. Yes, and the Good. money was supplied to local um, food relief efforts. So uh, cloth, um, Catholic Charities, the what was formerly known as the Ecumenical Food Pantry, and a number of other, Holyrood, um, El Nido de Esperanza, like groups that are servicing specifically Washington Heights, Inwood, to a certain extent, um, parts of Harlem and the South Bronx. All right, very good, very good. So um, in terms of um, the campus testing data, just to give you a brief update, um, we continue to provide COVID-19 PCR diagnostic tests for faculty, staff, students, and um, non-affiliates. So for the week of April 26 to May 2nd, 1,187 tests were conducted on campus with a sum total of three positive results. So those numbers continue to be low. Um, across all of the university campuses, 5,893 tests were conducted over the course of that week. So testing is still going on. As Julio mentioned, vaccines are now available um, in the Black building. I don't have as much information about that, but as he promised to follow up, if anything, if you think that there's any information that I need to provide, please feel free to let me know. Um, another important thing that we wanted to report on um, was NY STEM. So for the New York State, um, fiscal year 22 budget, um, NY STEM has unfortunately been eliminated. Um, this is something that was very, very disappointing to um, our faculty researchers because not only is this an important biomedical research program, but it also provides jobs. Um, it provides important scientific progress on you know diseases such as cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, things that we unfortunately are way too familiar with. So um, we definitely um, will be revamping our efforts to just highlight the importance of supporting these type of research programs across the state um, in order to further research, in order to further scientific advances, advances and to you know, improve the quality of life and health of people. Um, Sarah, you have a question? Um, yeah, just a congratulations on that fundraising last year for the Medical Center Nurses Green Medical Center. Thank you. Um, the, um, okay. the question I had, I guess, would be... Uh, 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 Sally, do you have a radio on? What is, what is the yes, background sorry. noise? That was Health and Human Services, um, but I'm off that call now, so I should turn it off. Oh. Um, with the, I think the medical students in the second year are on their rotations right now, and I guess the other guys are in, in their different um, specialties now. Um, do you know what percentage of medical students are vaccinated? I would guess it's pretty high. I do not have that information, but I will definitely try to get Here that is. for you. Okay, thanks. Um, I, I, I want to go back. Well, I want I want to go back, uh, Janiel, to the uh, uh, to the fact that um, to, I was pretty surprised to to read in your report uh, that the uh, state budget eliminated the uh, NY STEM program, which does. Uh, all of this important stem cell research, and uh, uh, which I think, uh, as you mentioned, uh, was also utilized in the COVID nineteen research. Yes, I believe Doctor. Yes. I believe Doctor Ho uh, was doing some stem stem cell research when he discovered uh, some uh, the the variant. The uh, variant, or the, uh, is it, uh, or at least he he uh, uh, when he discovered some of the. Um, uh, some of the components of the virus, I believe, uh, it was it wasn't. I believe it was through uh, stem cell research. So, uh, Chris Nickel from State Senator Jackson's office is on the call, and maybe uh, 
uh, he, he when he gets a chance, he can look into this issue to see. I mean, this was a state budget that was uh, uh, pretty expansive and included all sorts of things and uh, mm-hmm. all sorts of uh, major uh, uh, projects. So it's surprising that something as important as this uh, 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 this uh, funding for medical research would have been eliminated. So, uh, right. uh, Chris, if, Chris, if you're listening, maybe uh, you could look into that for us and find out how that could have happened. And maybe it was an oversight and the money will be restored at a later date. Especially well, surprising when we have a democratic controlled um, state house. Yeah, right. and considering the events um, that the governor has you know, faced for the past few months, I think he was seemed to be more amenable to uh, conceding in areas where he was um, initially not really interested in um, coming to the table right. and meeting about. But that being said, um, you know, Ross is the expert on this. So when he does come back, he'll be okay. able to answer very specific questions okay. and well, how we can okay. move forward and expect for the next um, the next state budget. And I right. guess the final, I'm sorry, Steve, go ahead. No, no, I'm, I, I now have in the chat a message from Chris Nickel. Um, uh, uh, Ebenezer, if you can, you should promote him to panelist. He's happy to weigh in and he'll definitely look okay. into this issue. Uh, okay. Janil, he wants to... Uh, uh, I, I don't know if I can use this word in public. He wants to back channel with you. Uh, so okay. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, uh, please, uh, he wants you to send him an email with all the details. Okay. So, we'll so uh, to tell, maybe tell Ross to do that. Um, we'll do. Thank you, Chris. Uh, okay, very good. Yeah, um, so uh, I, I don't have any details, Steve, but I am happy to do the research about this. And Janelle and I can be in touch uh, after the meeting. Uh, I know we very have good. each other's info. And, I, I think we can track down what happened here. It it seems like it might have been an oversight. Um, yeah, that's. I, I gotta believe that's what it was because yeah. this is. Uh, yeah. this I mean, we had our like eyes something. on a lot of different education balls. I know, uh, I know, I know. <laughs> this one but, may not have been one that we personally had eyes on, but I'll. See, no, I'll no, no, no. I, I wouldn't. Gustavo, no, Gustavo's no. I, I, uh, I'm sure that's the case, but it's. Okay. Uh, it seems seems unusual that in a budget that provided for so much and so many. Uh, uh, so many basic human needs that this particular program uh, somehow got dropped out. But, you know, these things do happen. Um, right. All right. Uh, uh, any other questions for uh, Ms. Edwards? Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you, Janiel. Uh, uh We'll move on now to uh, 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 to uh, Betty Lehman, who I hope is uh, has now fully recovered uh, from whatever she experienced earlier today. Uh, uh, Betty? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, we can hear you. Okay. Although you, although you, you sound as though you're in some kind of an echo chamber. I do close you. Can you hear me better now? I can dial in. No. Yeah, maybe you should dial in. Are you are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I had to have some okay. um, stuff done, and as you know, everybody knows this is true. Nothing runs, runs on time here. So we're starting. Yeah. Book is starting at two ten thirty. It didn't start till two thirty. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm looking for Ross. Uh... Eddie, you're really low. Yeah. I'm low. Uh, you know, if you want to move on to the next one, I'll find this. And then oh, okay. okay. All right. Very good. All right. Yeah. Well, you, um, very good. All right. So the next on the agenda is the corner project. Um, uh, and as you know, as, as I've reported in the past, uh, the corner project after a uh, uh, search for several months came up with a, a new site at 180th Street, 500 West 180th Street uh, at the corner of Amsterdam Avenue. And, uh, uh, they, they're here to give us an update about uh, the new location and uh, how they're now, uh, uh, how they're currently operating. So uh, Adrian Feliciano Jr. is the uh, Director of Harm Reduction Services and uh, Brittany Vargas Estrella, the Associate Director of Marketing and Operations. Uh, Adrian and Brittany, uh, I, I believe I saw your names. You're with us? Yes, we're here. Thank you so much for having us, Steve. Thank you so much, Simon. Uh, well, you, you, you can call me Steve. Um, that's okay. Um, uh, Adrian, uh, who do you have with you? Oh, this is my daughter, Maya. Say hi, my Maya. Hi. Hi, Maya. Uh, 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 are we putting you, you to sleep? The actual boss. 
Oh, okay. Very soon, uh, yeah. She, it's her it's her bedtime soon, so she she gets a pass for tonight. All right. Well, this well, I uh, tell, tell her to keep listening to our meeting. She'll be able to fall asleep pretty easily. Um, <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, 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 Adrian, or uh, who's going to handle this? Which one of you? Uh, well, uh, we're tag teaming today. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, You're we're tag teaming. teaming. Okay, who, who's, go, who's going first? So, um, Washington Heights Corner Project, thank you so much, Steve, for giving us um, the platform. Um, like you said, uh, well, first of all, thank you, everybody, for being here and, and having us tonight. Um, really wanted to um, give some updates on, on our space. We were able to move in. Um, to our space um, and, and begin services at the beginning of March. So we're going into now um, our second full month of, of, or actually going into now our third full month of services. Um, uh, we've had zero incidents within the space. We've put in um, tons of measures uh, to incorporate um, our public safety and outreach team. Um, however, because of, um, we, we do need to expand at the moment. So we are looking to, uh, we are hiring in the process of hiring some new staff, um, but we've had to pull our public safety and outreach team just a bit to help man it. Um, so we are in the process now of, of continuing our services. Um, we have been open again since the beginning of March. Um, and we have uh, again had zero incidences with since we've been in the space, zero um, overdoses, um, no incidents within within the area. We've been doing very well uh, with community partners of contacting our public safety and outreach team and ensuring that we are able to respond within um, an appropriate time. Um, and we are currently working with um, Montefiore Hospital as well as New York Presbyterian um, to include um, some care for our folks on site. So, I'm, sorry, was, I'm sorry, one second. What was the last part of that sentence? You're, you're working with the two hospitals to, to do what? To to include some some direct care for our folks on site, not primary care, but some some bringing some some care to them. Linkage to uh, on, at 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 the uh, at the 180th Street location. Correct. Oh really? Okay. Um, well, you you had you, you had a uh, you had a doctor, I believe, from Presbyterian who was working uh, uh, every now and then at 181st Street when you were uh, when you were in that uh, location. Uh, uh, so, uh, um, but now you're, now you've also re, uh, developed a link with Montefiore. Yes. So, um, yes, we've, we've worked with Dr. Shearer out of, um, the HP six clinic out of New York Presbyterian. Um, and that contract actually, um, is, is scheduled to expire at the end of this month. Um, so we will continue working with them. We will continue, um, to have, um, an ongoing relationship. Uh, with them, but we also are working with uh, Montefiore Hospital, who is currently established um, a health hub within our sister organization at Nairi. So we will be working with with both um, both or uh, facilities. Oh, yeah, but Montefiore is also going to have a doctor based at uh, at your site. We're going to have some care out of there. Yes. Oh, all right. It, all right, very good. Yeah. Uh, Brittany, uh, you were going to yeah. say something. So I was going to say that uh, our site is actually located at 500 West 180th Street. So it's on the corner of 180th and Amsterdam. Uh, we've acquired two floors, the second and third floor of uh, the building on that corner. Um, and our the second floor area is uh, our drop-in center, which we have about eight socially distanced chairs with dividers in between each of them. Um, as well as, as tables and things like that. So folks can have a private area uh, in our drop-in center for them to place their bags, sit down, relax, have some respite. Uh, we are operating two bathrooms and two showers. Uh, and then our third floor is our case management and management area. So it, it's, it's mostly office space. It allows for more confidentiality than our, than our you know, drop-in center, which uh, is, Open, more open concept. Um, and it's been working really well so far. Our participants are, are really enjoying uh, our new space, are happy that we're indoors. Um, we're still working on getting, spreading the word and, and, and letting all of our participants know where we are. Um, so we're increasing uh, our capacity every day and increasing our participant uh, reach every day as well. Um, 
and that's that's pretty much my update on our, our space uh, where we how, are. How, how does how, how does the uh, how does the space compare to what you had before? Is it is it a comparable a square footage? Um, so the previous square footage that we were uh, that we had um, on Saint Nicholas was eight thousand square feet, and uh, this is, the new space now is about five thousand square feet, um, and that's split amongst two floors. So while while it, it is a reduction of overall space, it is a bit different because um, it is split amongst two floors. Uh, but it, but it also sounds as though there's an advantage, to, as Brittany mentioned, to maybe having it split between the two floors, so that you can yeah. have the separate you can have the separate uh, drop-in center uh, and give and still have some uh, private space for people uh, in the case management area. Yeah, interestingly um, enough, the the spaces actually works very well in that sense of of, of having the opportunity to have um, different locations for different programs, but also have some, some a bit of the integration with it. So um, initially it was a bit of a challenge with the way that the layout ended up. It, it actually worked very well. Yeah. And uh, and you were, I believe you were, you were able to shift maybe some of your administrative functions to, uh, uh, to your main office uh, on 123rd Street. So that the fact that you gave up the 3,000 square, you lost 3,000 square feet hasn't necessarily uh, um, caused you to reduce the programming space. Right. That actually that actually has been very helpful. We have a lot of team, a, a lot of folks that, as we are in the process of merging, um, are splitting their time between between both facilities. So um, we've been had the opportunity to consolidate a lot of workspaces yeah. um, and right. COVID, you know, really provided that opportunity and folks working from home and working remotely. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, right. yeah it's, it's really beneficial in that sense of, of optimizing the space okay. that we have in Washington Heights. Right. But, but, uh, but I gather from what uh, Brittany said, you're, you're still not back to the level of service uh, that, uh, that you had when you were on, uh, on, on 181st in St. Nicholas. You still have to work yourself up to bringing back the, uh, participants that you had, uh, you know, maybe, what is it now, over a year ago, two, two years ago? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, um, we, we still are definitely feeling the effects of COVID where, you know, there are some folks that we haven't seen in some time. Um, and then also um, just the fear of folks um, uh, accessing, accessing services with direct contact. So uh, we are still in the process there. Um, as I stated earlier, um, and Brittany stated, we are expanding and, and we do look forward to um, as the weather um, improves and, 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 you know, COVID guidelines lessen up, uh, we do anticipate that we're coming across more folks within the community and we'll be able to um, redirect folks. That's really the, the, the next phase now is, is improving, increasing the outreach, I should say, and, and redirecting folks back into the space. And additionally, uh, we're really working to make the space feel more like home. Uh, and we're we're adding art, we're adding TVs, we're really making the space as welcoming as possible. And we're hoping that that as well will make folks want to stay longer uh, and, and really engage in our services a little bit more. Well, what, what did you say you're adding? Did you say, did, did, did you say TVs? We're adding art, we're adding TVs, we're making the space oh, yeah, a little oh, bit more, more like oh. home. Okay, oh, you did say TVs, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Um, uh, well, uh, you, you got like a, a 40 foot screen or something. What is it? Um, um, okay. Um, and, and I'm assuming that the uh, public safety and outreach staff for people who go out into the community, they go uh, uh, through the uh, business areas, uh, the business district, they go into the parks and uh, mm -hmm. they look for uh, people who uh, need your services. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. they, they also do syringe cleanup and, and other types of cleanup. Uh, to, to ensure that the community stays stays uh, palatable and, and that our participants are also right. being reached in a, in a different capacity because reaching folks directly where they're at in the parks on the streets uh, is a different type of engagement than if they were just to show up at our door. But but, but this is something that they do is that they they do do try to reach people directly and mm -hmm. try to direct them uh, to to this uh, to, uh, to your center for services. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, correct. All right, very good. All right, uh, uh, other, uh, is that a question from Julio? Yes, sir, Steve. Uh, well, Julio, you're not a member of my committee, so I cannot recognize you yet. So you're going to have to hold your question. Uh, are there members of my committee who have any questions? 
Uh, Julio, I think you may have a question. Uh, what, what, what's your question? Well, thank yeah, what, you. no, I just want to say, I mean, it's, um, I, I had the opportunity to go up uh, to the Corner Project's new location, unfortunately, pre-construction. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty nice space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I know this last year has been uh, very difficult also for the Corner uh, Project's uh, family. So I know that um, you know you had the passing of, of Billy Billy Garcia last year. Uh, is there going to be anything to to recognize Billy uh, so that when people go there, uh, th they sort of remember the work that he did for you know for the homeless and, and folks in this community? Yes, absolutely. Actually, um, we do plan on dedicating the third floor, which is going to be our care coordination center um, after after Billy. So once it's um, um, uh, you know uh, ready and 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 um, uh, you know ready for presentation, I should say, um, and, and and a bit more settled, um, we do anticipate on renaming it and dedicating it um, after Billy. Oh, thank you very much. That's nice a beautiful here. question. Thank you so much. All right, uh, any other questions? Uh, uh, I, I should mention that we have been joined by some of our other committee members, uh, uh, like Catherine Diaz, Jay Mazur, Daryl Cochran have been, uh, uh, have been with us for a while um, since, uh, uh, since we last uh, uh, announced uh, uh, the presence of our members. Um, Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Adrian, uh, Brittany, uh, uh, and uh, Mia. Uh, Mia is, uh, uh, we have not succeeded in putting Mia to sleep. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Apologize. I apologize for that. I, we we no did make our best efforts here. But, uh, but uh, let, let her continue oh. to listen to the meeting. I'm sure Mia will still want to, will definitely want to go to sleep after, uh, by the time we finish the meeting. Um, uh, thank you, Adrian. Uh, Brittany, uh, please keep us posted on uh, how uh, things are going. At, uh, at 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 the corner project. Okay, Absolutely. thank you very much. And uh, Mia, Mia, you are scaring me with that mask, Mia. I, uh, I, I, uh, you're scaring me uh, very much, uh, Mia. Please put put down that mask. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, uh, uh, bye, Mia. Uh, uh, Betty, are you back with us? Oh, Betty, uh, Betty, 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 you're not you're not doing well here, Betty. Uh, it's been a rough uh, day. Yeah, I, I can imagine, but uh, 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 I can't. I can't. I can't hear you too well. Uh, uh, try, uh, did, did you? Did Did you call in? I'm calling now. You You're on the phone now. I am. Can you hear me? I I well I can. Okay. Well. Okay. Go Go ahead. Let's see if you can give the report. The meeting ID is. Uh, okay. Hold on. Goodbye. Okay. Enter your meeting ID, followed by count. The meeting ID I have is 986-7153-7264. Okay, could you give that to me one more time, please? Because I was, I was planned to be at Isabella this afternoon. And as it turned yeah. out, I think I screwed up in terms of timing, and I never got there. So I normally print everything out and get organized, but I'm yeah. unable to do that now. So. Um, All right, I'll tell you what, Betty, why, why don't we... Well, why don't we hold you for next month, okay. 
Uh, and uh, or you can you can you can send me your report, and I'll I'll send it around to the committee members, or you or you or you can send it to all the committee members, and uh, uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll in, insert your report uh, l later on. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, up next is uh, is uh, Tanya giving us a report, an update from uh, the uh, Washington Heights Inwood Noise Task Force. Okay, um, I just need to be able to share the screen, which I need Ebenezer to grant me that ability. Oh, God, D did I see Arlene Bronze after? She was, but I think she got off. Yeah. She oh, was she got there off. For okay. Ebenezer? Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, great. Perfect. All right. Oh, gee, what just happened? Oh, Jesus. Oops. Okay. Uh, so. No, no, uh, no, Tanya, do me a favor. Yeah. I just, why do I, I keep losing the screen here? Hold on. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have to call in. Do me a favor. G give me uh, 30 I'll seconds. Hold. hold. Okay, yeah, no hold. Problem. All right. Okay, is this hold it? Okay, no, no, I'm oh. Okay. All you right, I'm back. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh so first thank you, Steve, for allowing me to just to give this update. I really appreciate it. You know, things sort of started here, was sparked here, so it's just appropriate that we bring it back here. Um, we wanted to, I wanted to update you all about what the task force has been doing over the last uh, more than over six months now. Uh, we started meeting back in November. Um, and um, so I, this is what this presentation is. It's going to give you an update on what we've done and where we go next. Uh, and so basically, I mean, I'm not going to go too in detail with this, but I just wanted to let you all know where we're focusing on in terms of what, oh, in terms of noise. Um, as some of you may know, we do have uh, some scholars that work with, that are part of the task force, including a scholar from the Columbia uh, Mailman School of Public Health. Um, and, uh, and of course, Dr. Arlene Bronzapt, who's done amazing work in this area of environmental uh, 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 noise. And, uh, you know, we know noise can be defined as simply as unwanted sound, but we know it's so much more than that. Um, and, you know, the United, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency uh, basically said in 1978 that uh, noise can is a significant hazard to public health. So it's been recognized for a while that, that noise, particularly unreasonable noise, can pose health risks to us. Um, and uh, this can include uh, things such as uh, cognitive impairment and sleep disturbances, which, you know, the World Health Organization, aka WHO, uh, you know, uh, basically concluded with its own studies of its own of pe of people in Western Europe. Um, so the task force itself is really concerned with these environmental sources of noise, so environmental noise. And that can include, of course, transportation, you know, road, rail, air, construction industry, but also most of what we're dealing with in our community involve community sources and social and leisure sources. So community sources such as neighbors, television, uh, bars and restaurants, and then leisure sources like portable music players, uh, AKA boom boxes and speakers, fireworks, dirt bikes. Uh, so these are the things that we've been concerned with in our in our task force. The things that community members have complained about, and, and that you know, in terms of being impacted on a daily basis. Um, as we know, we're not going to go too in detail with this, but 2020 was a very difficult year for Washington Heights and Inwood. Um, the Madburn President's Office did supply us with uh, basically charts that showed that our community board district, District 12, had the highest number of, of noise complaints out of all of the other uh, uh, 11 Manhattan uh, uh, community board districts. So we were heavily impacted. Some of you have seen these numbers before, but you know we were we were the highest in terms of street noise, 
fireworks, uh, vehicle noise, you name it across the gamut, we had the highest uh, number of, of complaints in that area. Um, and as we know, it, it, you know, this, this has a real imp, uh, implications for our community and has had real impact. We had a fire in Inwood on Nagel Avenue uh, uh, that destroyed an apartment. People could have died. Um, and so this activity that we're talking about, it's not just quality of life, quote unquote, people complaining. It has, it can have real impacts. Um, on our community in terms of the, the threat to our own safety as community members living in this community. So we want to make sure that people are aware of that. Um, I'm not going to go into this, but, you know, we, we did, this, you know, there were some, there's been a lot of problems and this is to continue. Even after 2020, we're still experiencing a lot of problems in our community in terms of dirt bikes, zipping up and down the streets. Um, I call it the Indy 500 because that's what it sounds like. Um, and these are some of the areas in the, that the community um, and in our task force have identified uh, as being particularly problematic. And, you know, I'm not going to read off all of those, but as you can see, it covers Washington Heights and Inwood, different parts of the community. So our community is being really impacted by these uh, dirt bike, this dirt bike activity and streetcar racing, um, as some of you may have already experienced. Um, the task force, just a little bit of history. Um, we had, and thank you to Steve Simon um, uh, for coordinating this in August 4th of 2020, we had our first public hearing on, on noise. Um, I was told, and Steve might have the correct numbers, but we had like over 400 people or something on this call, on that Zoom. Um, and as you can see, we had all our elected officials and other city agencies represented. After that uh, public hearing, at the public hearing, I suggested we should have a task force, some, some way to sort of bring all of these different stakeholders together and, and figure this problem out and figure out some solutions. The community members really wanted to have this to be community led, right? So they wanted it outside of existing governmental and political systems, and that included us, um, uh, the community board. They wanted it to be truly community led, even as we're working in. In, co in collaboration with all of these different uh, governmental bodies, including the community board. And so that's what happened. Um, we had our first meeting in November. Um, this is our mission statement. We, you can, you know, I'm happy to post that in the chat. I won't read it, you know, just try to move things along. Um, but, you know, the, the primary goal of this task force, of course, is to find solutions. Um, but we want to do that in a way that is uh, representative of our community. We want to make sure that it's community led and, and that uh, we are elevating the voices of, of the predominant uh, groups that live in here, elevating the leadership of black and brown voices uh, in this task force, and that we are working collaboratively with our elected officials, with our government, with our community leaders, with everyone to come up with solutions to this problem. And we want to do this in a way that's positive. So all of the divisive sort of language about, uh, you know, that circulates when we start talking about quality of life issues, this task force is really not interested in that. It's not helpful. And it really doesn't help us to come to some solutions for the problem. And so that's not what we're doing. Uh, we, you know, want people to understand this is a public health issue and that's what why we need to tackle this as a community um just a little bit about the task force very quickly we have 21 total members uh, this members have an average of 22 years in the community so again we're not talking about people new arrivals and i'll use that dog whistle that goes out out there we're not talking about new arrivals we're talking about a lot of people who've been here a long time we have people who've been here over 50 50 something years, they're almost their entire lives. We do have people who've been here for two years, um, but we have different a range of perspectives, which is very important. We want to make sure that both Inwood and Washington Heights were as, as equally represented as possible. We have 13 members who are either live and or work in Washington Heights. We have nine who either live in or work in Inwood. We want to make sure that, it, that this task force represents the uh, a, a diversity of constituencies impacted by this. So we have people who represent tenant associations, schools, small businesses, elderly, disabled, youth, community organizations, and of course, academic experts who have helped us in the community understand noise and its impact on our community. We also want to make sure it's diverse. 
Um, and so, it, you know, this, this task force reflects that we have nine people who self-identify as white, uh, six who self-identify as Hispanic, four who self-identify as Black, and one who self-identifies as Middle Eastern. And these are the people who self-identify. Not everybody would answer that question, and that's their choice. Um, and uh, we met on, the, our first meeting was November 23rd via Zoom, and we have had, we've met each month. Uh, subsequently uh, up to now, and we'll be meeting this month as well. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of who we are and the composition. As I said, it was a, a lengthy process trying to find, community members did this themselves. They nominated each other and, and we wanted to make sure that it, it reflected the, diver the full range of the diversity of this community and uh, the constituents impact. So these are, some of the people that we've all of the people that we've met uh with over these six months uh, as you can see the list i don't have to go through it all but basically every single regulatory city agency we've met with them uh anyone who could enforce noise we've met with them we've met with the district attorney we uh, Madden district attorney's office the people from the mayor's office joined us we also had a number of senators from state senator robert jackson who joined us uh, actually, a few times. Uh, 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 we also had uh, Councilmember Mark Levine join us a couple of times. We had State Senator Brad Hoyleman and State Senator Andrew Gennardis, who both spoke to us about the legislation that they are sponsoring. That is, uh, will that are uh, these this piece piece of legislation uh, deal with some noise related issues, and they're they're trying to get it passed in the state assembly. Uh, we also had representatives from. You know, uh, uh, from U.S. Rep. Uh, Espilot, Councilmember Rodriguez, you know, Rodriguez, and Comptroller Scott Stringer. We also had Beta NYC. Of course, they provide the data for three one one. We had everyone but DOT uh, join us, um, and so just want to give you an idea of all the people we met, and as well as community members. Uh, these are some of our findings. Um, just very quickly, of course. One of the major findings, of course, noise is a public health issue. This, there's been plenty of studies done um, to prove and show the connection uh, between uh, uh, unreasonable noise and, and adverse impacts on our health from whether it's cardiovascular uh, impacts, mental health, uh, cognitive impairment. Uh, we even have someone on our task force who's a small, who's a business owner in our community who has hearing impairment in one ear, and and, and when the dirt bikes are running rapid, and, and, or rapidly through the community, when the fireworks are going off all day, it really impairs our ability to function. And so these are real impacts on our community, and our people. Um, we know that these activities are either outright illegal or they're against city rules and regulations that are already on the books. So we're not talking about anything that we have to create illegality around, they're already illegal or against city rules. So we're looking for enforcement of those things. There's a lack of clarity in terms of city agencies, in terms of who is in charge of what. Um, I think the community has a lot of confusion, like, okay, what role do you play? Who do we call if we have this? type of noise problem, you know, where does your enforcement start and where does it end? So there needs to be a lot of more clarity on that. There needs to be better coordination and collaboration between city agencies because they just do their own thing. And so our work of our task force, really, we have brought a lot of these people together and they're starting to work together uh, to tackle some of these things, which is what it's going to take. There is a real lack of resources with some of our um, uh, city agencies. Um, and I'm, again, I know that Steve works for the parks, but we have a, a limited resource in terms of PEP officers, things like that, um, that have impacted people's ability to do more. But we know that there are solutions out there that don't require additional resources, and we, are, we have identified those things that we can do now. Um, and there is also a lot of divisiveness around culture, and we feel that that has stymied, as I say here, the ability to address the problem. Um, and it, when it's reduced to this sort of level of, of lack of nuance and, 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 and accusations are hurled back and forth, it really has stopped us from really addressing this issue. Um, and so we want to cut through, we, 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 this is a public health issue, period. Um, and everybody's impacted. Our community, our task was extremely diverse, of all different uh, uh, backgrounds, and they're all impacted. Um, I've had veterans call, say, I have my PTSD is off the charts because of the fireworks. I have parents with newborns saying my child can't sleep 
I mean, this is real. And so we, we need to cut, cut, you know, cut back on the, the divisive dialogue and really deal with what the real problem is. Um, the, as I said, some people are starting to work together. So the NYPD is working with DEP. They're starting, especially the 33rd, they're starting to do joint operations together. And um, I know the 34th uh, precinct said they're start. They're going to be meeting with DEP next week to start their own, you know, start doing some joint operations in, 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 the, in the precinct, in the areas that they, that precinct covers. And so this is very, very positive. Uh, our task force is also working with uh, Councilman Mark Levine's office and DEP to update the noise code. Some of you might not be aware the noise code hasn't been updated since 2007. Lots of things in our community have changed. We have new problems. We have new technologies. We have so many different things and that needs to be updated to better reflect where we are now. Um, so that's some movement forward. Uh, there are going to be some target areas where the police are, are, they learned from last year, these are areas that were problematic in 2020, and they're going to be sort of really zoning in in terms of those areas to sort of try to, to stay, you know, stave off some of these problems that people were having in these particular parts of the community. And some of our community residents have volunteered to be liaisons, you know, with the, with the NYPD you know, in the, in, the, in the community in which they live, which is a positive thing of people working together to address these issues. Um, uh, I'm going to stop sharing this so I can share some of our recommendations. As some of you are aware, we came out with our list of recommendations of how to tackle uh, what we feel can be done to tackle this problem. And I will call that up. Uh, can people see that? Okay. So we, we basically have short term goals that we think these are things that can be done now. Um, and then we have long term goals, things that we that are some of these things that are a little bit more complex that will take more time or maybe need more, maybe need resources or need to pass the legislative legislature or something like that. But as for a short term, I'm not going to go in all of them. I know we need to move this along, but uh, I'll touch on a few. One of the things that we wanted to do to cut down on the confusion is have the mayor's office really create a clear chart that outlines various agency responsibilities around noise. So if you're if you're DEP, what are you responsible for if there's a noise problem? If you're NYPD, what are you responsible for? If you're FDNY, what are you responsible for? So we want to really be clear who does what and who do people call or who, do, who should they engage with if there is an issue. And that's really important. We also know uh, by having met with the FDNY that, and, and the person who's in charge of their task force, actually, and Steve was actually at this meeting, um, thank you, Steve, for attending, that the fireworks task force starts their work on Memorial Day. And we're, you know, we noticed the fireworks started earlier in Maine. So we're asking them, start your work on May 1st, okay, because the, the fireworks task force really targets suppliers and distributors, though, and those with in possession of large quantities. So they're going after the distributors and the suppliers to try to cut it off at the pass so those fireworks don't enter into our community. And that's great work. But we need them to start that earlier because people are already engaging in legal firework activity long before Memorial Day. So we're saying that we can start to target the suppliers earlier. We can probably stop a lot of that from entering the community. Um, we also, again, we talked about the joint operations to be able to, to stave off some of these dirt bikes by creating some checkpoints, uh, you know, and also by working with, uh, with other precincts to determine where some of these bikes are being stored. Because what we found is a lot of people coming in from other communities, these bikes are, they have fake license plates, they're coming in from other places. So we're, how do we identify where these where they're coming from, where these bikes are being stored and can confiscate them. And I know both the 34th and 33rd have been sitting, uh, posting information and, and pictures of all the dirt bikes they've been confiscating over the last few weeks. That's a positive sign, but it needs to continue. Uh, and then uh, we want um, uh, the school district to start to use this uh, education module. The DEP already has created a sound and noise education module to teach uh, students and teachers all about sound, uh, the impacts of sound, certain decibel levels, and the health uh, issues associated with that. So if the school district can start to integrate that in their curriculum, we can educate some of our young people and, and their parents about the real threat of this. We feel that that's important. 
uh, we want all of our uh, police officers, and we're talking about the community neighborhood sector police. So the police who are on the ground, they should all have decibel um, noise decibel readers, and they should know how to use them. Right now, we were told that each precinct only has two. So for all to cover all of the 33rd is two decibel readers, all of 34, two decibel readers, that's insufficient. And then sometimes they, they don't even take them with them and they're not, or they're not trained on it. Um, we also uh, would, uh, would like more engagement by our elected officials, like I said, uh, in this and less rhetoric. Uh, because what we've heard is a lot of rhetoric about, you know, accusing people of discrimination you know, and, and, you know, things like that. And we're saying that it's just newcomers to the community who are complaining. So this is not helpful because it's also not accurate. And so we just need them to engage with us and helping us solve this problem and a lot less of that other stuff. As far as long-term, like we said, updating the noise code, we also feel that it'd be a good idea to create an office. Again, people are gonna have many opinions about this, but we have an office like we have the commissioner of the New York uh, City Office of Nightlife. We thought it would, could be very beneficial to create an office of, for the quality of life because of the fact that it's not only just our community, but the whole city of New York is experiencing these problems. And there needs to be a central place that could uh, deal with this issue and figure out solutions uh, that would work. And also a place where city agencies can um, come together and do collaborative work um, and also where community members can bring their concerns. So we feel that there is a, an office that's dedicated to this. Um, it would also create more equity because right now what we're seeing is some parts of our city are getting attention to their quality of life issues and we are not getting the same attention. Uh, I've been reading a whole, the NYPD really putting a focus in certain parts of, of the community because they have more political power and more money. And so we really feel that something like this could help to be uh, create more equity um, and allow more people to be heard. We need to audit and analyze 301 complaints because as people know, a lot of those complaints are closed out within minutes or seconds and uh, without being resolved. Um, we also know that DEP and we also, there's a disconnect. DEP handles certain noise complaints and then NYPD handles certain noise complaints, but the 311s don't really integrate the DEP noise complaints into a, a lot of some of that into the system. So we want to, you know, Beta NYC to think about how to integrate all of this data from the different sources into one system so we can better reflect the actual problem. Uh, and then uh, just very quickly, um, we would like to hold a series of conversations. We would like the community board, maybe the, this committee could be involved in, in, in working with other elected officials and um, to create uh, some series of dialogues around this uh, so people can talk. And we also, uh, you know, uh, think that businesses themselves need to have educated education because we noticed that there, some of them are doing, using outdoor speakers and DJs. And that's actually against the rules. Like you cannot have outdoor speakers, but people do that. And so to a way to, to, to work with them to, to, you know, to, 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 you know, squelch that would really be helpful to the community and make them better patron, uh, better entrepreneurs, better business owners for our community. Uh, uh, would be helpful. And so those are some of the uh, recommendations. I'm happy to, to put this in the chat so people can have them. Um, our next steps, I'm not even going to bother to share the rest of it, but we're going to continue to, to talk, uh, to push the city agencies and the elected officials to enact our recommendations. Uh, we're going to continue to meet um, and continue to see how, how far we can go to get those things enacted and that's where we are right now in the stage we are in um and so any support of it to you know for that would be very helpful uh to call up these people the city agencies to speak to when we're talking with our elected officials you know to say you know we need to enact some of this stuff so we can get we don't want a repeat of summer 2020 and we definitely want a community where everyone feel like they can live I don't know if some of you read the article, but 16,000 people left our community in just 2020. Now, we don't know if that's all related to noise. I can't say. Uh, and the articles didn't say. But we lost 16,000 people in just one in just 2020. And these people are not going to be replaced, you know, with low-income housing. We know how that goes. 
uh, it's going to be replaced by the, the rents are going to jack up and it only accelerates, you know, making this community uh, less affordable. So, you know, I, I will open up to questions. I hope I didn't talk too long. Sometimes it's hard for me to tell how long I'm going. Um, so I apologize if I went too much, but any questions? Well, I think you did go a little bit long, but it was worth listening to. So, uh, oh, thank you, Steve. Coming from you, thank you, because I know you, you don't play. So, but, you know but, but I, and I and I, I would like a chance because it was difficult. To, there was a lot there, and and you couldn't really read it all on the screen, obviously. So, uh, if if you wouldn't mind sharing uh, the presentation with me, sure. I, I would also like to like, would have liked to have taken down more notes. I but before I call on uh, Sally and Daryl, I just want to. Um, I, uh, I mean, there's a lot there, and there's a lot there to absorb, and there's a lot there that I think this committee t could be working on. And uh, and I am, uh, uh, because of my prior work, I am very interested in, in hearing what the ideas are for updating the noise code, especially as, as well as some of the other issues, which uh, you know I would like to have the committee pursue. But on, on the uh, page where you have findings and where you say that there's divisiveness around culture, right. uh, my suggestion to you is... Uh, is that you put culture in quote marks because this is uh, to me is a uh, it's uh, what's what's the word it's a it's a, uh, to me it's a somewhat of a bogus argument that people throw out there i believe that um uh, uh people of any ethnic or racial group uh have difficulty with uh, excessive noise with fireworks with dirt bikes with people racing outside their windows i don't think it matters what ethnic or racial group you are i don't take that as i don't take this as being a cultural issue that some cultural groups enjoy noise um you know maybe some people do but i don't think this is something that's specific to a uh, a cultural group so i would be careful about how you phrase that i would at least put it in quote marks okay. because it's a it's an argument that people use that i don't think we should necessarily accept um oh we're uh, not so, accepting it we're, that's why we're saying yeah. that we're saying please right. we need to not do that because it's not right. helpful and right. we met with elected but, but, officials but, but, we heard it but, more but, we heard it even then but, so. i know and but, not but, all but of them. i'm saying some people say i know that. But but to me, it's not even a real argument. It's uh, it's a you can't just say that uh, that it's an issue about culture. It's uh, we we need we need to uh, uh, somehow uh, 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 disavow that argument. Um, uh, 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 Sally, uh, you have a comment or a question? Um, I have a comment, um, Tanya. That's that you did an unbelievable job. Um, I this is a great service to our community board district. I just. I want to applaud and applaud again um, what you said. And Steve, following up on, I mean, all the work that you did, I just, I don't know how you do it. Um, Steve, just with the culture thing, I think, yeah, what, ta what I think they're trying to say is culture is used as a way to try and dismiss the problem. Um, exactly, yes, yes. Yeah. But yes. anyway, Tanya, kudos to you. I think we all owe you a few drinks. Well, no, it's the whole entire task force. I tell you, I mean, we worked really hard to get, you know, the, the people in the community who we know are have been actively involved in care um, and who understand the nuance. You know, they get it. They understand this is you know, it's not always so simple and come up with these ideas. These were the task force's ideas of things that they feel if we do this will help us to to, you know, so resolve this problem. And, you know, and so, you know, I'm really grateful to them. Like I said, I'm grateful to all the people who came before us. We had everybody and we are really are thankful to all of the, the city agencies, to the uh, elected officials who did show up themselves before us. Um, you know, that's how we're going to do it. We even had a meeting re uh, recently with the Parks Department NYD, just sit NYPD, just sitting down and talking about the difficulties in covering some of the things in the parks. We have a lot of problems in our park areas with, with the rules being violated and parties without permits, things going on all night and things like that. And they were able to sit down and just have this conversation, like, what are the challenges? How can they better collaborate and work together? This is this is how things are going to be resolved because at the end of the day, that's what it's going to take. Um, not dividing people, but bringing people together to really work it out. And I think um, we, really, no. we really need to advocate for funding for parks. Yes, to the, I agree. You know, yes, that's the, something that can be done. Yes, especially, yeah, advocating for funding for PEP officers. They have, I can tell you right now, they have five. Mm -hmm. One supervisor 
and four PEP offices to cover from 125th all the way up to 220, all the parks. Yep. That's all they got. That's it. Oh, yeah. No, they, their budget that's got That's not enough. Their budget got decimated. Yeah, that's not enough. All right, uh, let me call upon Daryl. Hi, and, you know, I'll reiterate. Um, I said in the chat, thank you, Tanya. Your work is amazing. Um, and this was so detailed um, and, and needed. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to, you know, say one thing, and maybe Steve uh, might want to chime in too, you know, just to add to the uh, elected or the, the officials group that may want to be, that may be interested in this, uh, the Mayor's Community Affairs Unit, uh, CAU. I don't know if you've engaged with them in the past. Oh, they were there. They were there. Oh, they were. Okay, good. All right, good. Yeah, because they, they, they would have the green light and the money, and, or they could, they would have the green light, they could green light a lot of things. So they were involved in, well, in the discussion. Um, what we can get well, them to well, do, who knows, but. Yeah. Oh, well, and I wanted to he... comment on this person. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Jennifer O. Um, said that, you know, the culture issue does need to be handled in a, a, a culturally sensitive way, and we agree um, that yeah. that's why we want to open up you know, a series of conversations. We are advocating for that. For, and we also uh, know that we are asking for churches to be a part of educating, um, you know, be a part because we know that people have good relate, close relationships with their churches. And, and so we, we're, one of the things that we're right. asking in our recommendations that churches become involved in the education campaign. We, we know, I mean, the people, like I said, on the task force represent, the, you know, people in the community. So, um, we, we agree with that, that that's, that's really important, but we also need to balance that with making right. sure that we can live here, that, you right. know, while we're having these conversations, right. we need to address right. the problem. Right. And let, let me just, uh, let me just say that with, with regard to the CAU, uh, they were especially helpful in uh, helping us organize the hearing that we held uh, last August. Uh, they helped us to, uh, their, their major role is to be uh, uh, the liaisons between the community and city agencies and the mayor's office, and they were very helpful in lining up city agencies to uh, come uh, to appear uh, at our public hearing in, in August. And, get, and getting uh, there, in with them on day one of whatever new administration there will be come January first. Uh, right. Uh, all right. Are there any? Are there any other? Uh, I, are there any other hands that are up? There was a attendee. Whose hand is up? Well, where is? How do you know? Where is that? Because I can. See, I just look. I see the hand oh, up on the attendees tab. Cheryl Miller. Oh, oh, Cheryl Miller. Cheryl Miller. Yes. Uh, um, so can can Cheryl speak? I don't know. You'd have to probably unmute. I think you need to promote her. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we're gonna, while we're waiting for that, we're going to be coming out yeah. with a full report. We're going to have a full report. Okay. It'll have all the names of the task force members, other uh, or actual report about the noise from our experts, um, and other more detail in there. So everything will be in there. Uh, but you know, I just wanted to. Oh, that's coming oh, very out good. next week. Yeah, we're going to, and I'm, I'll make well, sure next, everybody all, gets. We'll send next, that out next already next week. Very good. All right. Uh, uh, thank you, Tanya. Oh, Cheryl, um, uh, Cheryl is speaking. Cheryl? Yes. Can you Cheryl? hear me? Yes. I just yes uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, um, Tanya, for all your work that you are doing with the task force uh, and everybody that's involved, everybody that had input, everybody that came up with these recommendations. And uh, I do agree with you and Steve that uh, it is not a culture issue. This is this is a public health issue. And there are a lot of people being very uh, badly impacted, uh, people that have health issues, which I am one, uh, and people that even don't have health issues, this can create, like Tanya was saying, serious health issues. So it is a health issue, has nothing to do with culture or any of that, that is a bogus argument. And so I just mm -hmm. wanted to say kudos to Tanya and uh, thank you for all that you're doing, Tanya. Much, much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, very good. 
Hello? And I want to thank the task force members because they are community members just like us. They have full-time jobs. Some of them, they work. Some of them say are small business owners. We have a number of small business owners on this task force. And to put in time and attend these meetings, <coughs> you know, that's a lot. You know, they really have been committed to, 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 to working on this. Now we just need our elected officials and our city agents to meet them halfway and say, hey, you know, we've done this work. Now it's, it's on... It's, the baton has been passed to you. Rhonda, there's right, a question uh, in the chat um, from a Jennifer D to the panelists. Also, my question from before about PS 173. Yeah, that's coming late. That's on Steve's agenda later. So I. No, no, no. But, but I don't know what that question is. Uh Oh, it's. um. Sorry, I have to scroll back up. I, I just didn't because we weren't. It's, this is the question about. um. She said, uh, she had a question about the construction going on at PS 173 at Fort Washington and 174. I understand that this is technically considered to be emergency, quote unquote, work because it is a school. However, on many nights, work does not start until uh, late 7 or 8 p.m. It continues well past 11. Um, and so, uh, you know, is there an ability to cap hours on this? Uh, the workers demonstrate no regard to the impact this might have on the surrounding area. Um, it more, it require, could they require more work during the day on weekends when school is not in session? <laughs> this has been going on for well over a year, and I know that it affects many on this side of the building I live in, and I'm not going to say that out loud. Uh, thank you for your time. Oh, I, I, know, I know that building very well. Um, uh, Ebenezer, are you, uh, is, uh, could you please look into this? Uh, uh, can you um, can you follow up on this uh, issue? Uh, if it's been going on for a long time, why would it be considered an emergency? Why would why would construction have to take place so late at night? This is very unusual. Uh, we should look into. Uh, can you please send me the details exactly what it is? Uh, and I follow well, it, up with the appropriate city agency. Jennifer, I, we need your email. Can you put it well, in? Well, it, private it's message? in the yeah, My yeah. email. Oh, is, you have it. OK. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Smith at cb.nyc.gov. But I receive yeah, it uh, every day, Tanya. I don't know why you said you don't have it. Uh, no, e no, no, that, it, you know, the, uh, uh, you, you'll be able to uh, copy the chat. Her uh, her question is uh, is in great detail here in the chat. But Jennifer, you could also email uh, Ebenezer at, in case you didn't hear the uh, email address. It's e b smith at c b dot n y c uh, dot gov, and you you should follow up with him tomorrow and uh, send him uh, uh, send him an email with all the specifics about what's going on at the school. Yes, more than happy to follow up. She put her All right, email very in good. the chat, too. So. All right. All right, but uh, send Ebenezer an email tomorrow. ebsmith at cb.nyc.gov. Uh, the d district manager is uh, is our major, uh, is our primary staff member, and his job is to follow up on uh, c community uh, complaints uh, such as this one. Uh, so thank uh, 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 thank you, Jennifer. Okay, under old business, uh, uh, DEP service requests. I did not get. Uh, I did not get the report for April. Uh, street and sidewalk cleanliness ratings. Um, I forgot to uh, check them, so uh, uh, we'll have to pass on that. Uh, the update on the uh, water main uh, sewer or gas line installation. Uh, I forwarded the uh, latest report to uh, the committee members and the. Uh, a project which is going on primarily uh, 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 between uh, uh, on Wadsworth Avenue from 183rd to 190th Streets, Audubon Avenue from 183rd to West 188th, uh, also Wadsworth Terrace between 188th and 190th Streets. It's at this point that 64% uh, of the work has been completed, and um, I believe they're anticipating that the project will be uh, fully completed um uh, hopefully by uh uh in uh, in june uh the uh, uh, roadways should be restored uh, by that time and all of the uh, uh water main and uh, uh gas main work should be completed by then um also uh 
on an issue that uh, this uh, committee and the board previously took a position in support of uh, state legislation calling for safe staffing, safe staffing in uh, hospitals and nursing homes. The uh, state legislature uh, approved uh, the legislation uh, on uh, Tuesday, and this uh, 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 the uh, the bill as it affects the hospitals requires that each hospital establish a clinical staffing committee that must include frontline workers like nurses as well as administration staff. Uh, they're supposed to agree on various uh, uh, staffing levels, and if they uh, can't uh, reach an agreement, a hospital would be allowed to set its own standards, uh, but the state health department would have to review the plan. And uh, the hospitals have until 2023 uh, to implement their plans. Uh, uh, the uh, bill dealing with nursing homes requires that staff spend a certain number of hours with residents uh, at a minimum uh, they would have to include three and a half hours of nursing care per resident per day. And the nursing homes have until uh, next year uh, to uh, comply with that. Uh, these bills are now going to the governor for him to sign. Um, so uh, uh, they're, they're not uh, law yet. Uh, he, still has to, uh, he still has to sign them. Is, is there any other old business? Um, I, uh, yeah, OC. I just, I'm sorry. Oh, no, see? I have an, a new basement, but new business. Okay, uh, Sally? Yeah, I just wanted to report on Earth Day and River Street since they happened in the past week. Um, yes. We had hundreds of people come by, especially on Saturday for a sustainability zone. Um, a shout out to um, Lorreen from New York City, T Tess and Trace for handing out um, PPE. That was really helpful. Um, River Sweep, which was this past Saturday, um, we took out 840 pounds of garbage and recyclables from the Dyckman Pier site. We had close to 50 volunteers. It was so successful um, that we are actually um, planning to go from the river to the ocean um, because we, what we don't get at the river site will end up in the ocean um, and have a, another um, cleanup event on um, for World Oceans Day, which is, um, an official world holiday, which falls on June 8th, and we will be celebrating on Sunday afternoon, um, the 6th. So I just wanted the, um, the waterfront looks really clean right now. So I just wanted to thank everybody who came by and volunteered. And that's it. How many volunteers should you have? Close. I think the last count I had was 47. So it was great. And we had, um, we also built sailboats out of, um, repurpose wood sales and all sorts of other upcycled materials. So it was great. There's a group of kids from um, Pono, which is a experimental school that came up and ran the boat building. So we had, we had a blast. You, you build sailboats out of recycled wood? Yeah. Little ones, like the kind you would build when you were a little kid. And then they. Um, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And actually one of the um, things that we collected was looks like either part of a floating dock or part of a building. Um, and we could have maybe started building a real life-size sailboat. Maybe we'll do that next time. But yeah, you wouldn't believe yeah. the kind of garbage you still find. Yeah, God. All right, 840 pounds of garbage and recyclables that you, you took out of that area. Wow. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, any, uh, we're up to uh, new business. Oh, OC. Yes. Um, I want to ask to get an update on um, the textile recycling. Can we, is that, who is, I forgot who is running that, but the textile recycling, when is it coming back to the farmer's market? Um, can we also get um, the Lower East Side Ecology Center at the next meeting to maybe tell us about the second location for e-waste, because we really have to stay on top of that. Uh, well, what Sally reported to us was that uh, uh, they're willing to have a second location, but they need funding for it. Right. They're um, not for profit. So, I mean, so, basically we need to be reaching out to Adonis um, oh. and to start the funding for that. All right. So I, yeah, I, I meant to call them up and ask them uh, what uh, what they're doing about um, uh, requesting funding from uh, the local electeds. So I'll I'll, okay. I'll I'll do that. But, okay. Uh, what about the textile recycling? 
this must be. Well, the tech, the tech, textile recycling is uh, uh, is being done by uh, sanitation, I guess, in conjunction with with the green market. So uh, I'll, I'll look into that too. And that okay, would be Grow you. NYC. I also um, put in the request to Chris because Robert Jackson did a shredding event, um, and I offered to Chris that we would co-host. Um, Friends in Woodhill Park would co-host a shredding event if we could do one of those up here. So I think that would also be helpful. I'm sure. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. People. Yeah. That that would uh, that would probably be uh, uh, be popular. I, I don't think, is Crystal on the line with us? Uh, probably not. Um, I think they find, he did it jointly with Danny O'Donnell. So the other person to reach out to, I can, I will email both of them, is Carmen De La Rosa. Yeah. All right, well, I think. Uh, with all of these, it requires I, I, some funding from somewhere. Well, I, well, I think sanitate, I don't know. So, uh, we should probably check with sanitation because uh, I believe these events are being done with the uh, Department of Sanitation. I, I know that they're scheduling one uh, uh, for one of our parks on the Upper East Side. So uh, uh, maybe we can talk to sanitation about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's a good idea. Um, I also want to mention that I was on the I was on a uh, a call today with uh, uh, various elected officials, offices, uh, Assemblymember Taylor, Borough President Brewer, Councilmember Levine, uh, Congressman Espayat. Uh, they're, they're talking about having a uh, uh, an, another one of these walks uh, through the uh, district, handing out PPE and information about vaccines. Uh, they're planning to do it uh, Saturday, June the 5th, uh, from 11 to 1, going up Amsterdam Avenue, from at least from 145th Street, maybe from 135th, uh, going up to 175th Street. Uh, so uh, 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 please let me know whether anyone on the committee would be interested in uh, participating and helping out, uh, especially uh, in uh, once they cross 155th Street uh, into our district. Uh, that would be sat again Saturday, June 5th uh, from 11 to 1. That's also the same day as Hike the Heights. Oh, is it really? Oh, gosh. All right. Well, this is a, this is a different type of hike. Right. All right. Um, uh, any other new business? Please? All right. Who is this? Betty, can you hear me? I'm sorry, is that Betty? Yes, can you hear me? I'm yeah, go I ahead. <laughs> I can very quickly give you a report for Isabella. Is that wrong? What is that? I, mean, I can give you the uh, report for Isabella verbally now. I'm going to send it around to you. It's up to you. Uh, I, I don't, I, you know, you still sound very weird. Uh, I mean, uh, can you, can the, can the other committee members make her out? Yeah, I can hear her. It's just very light. But okay. go, go ahead, Betty. All right. Quickly. All right. Is Isabella has been following the guidelines of New York State Department of Health. But this week, we finally were able to welcome visitors to our residents, in-person visitors, which we haven't done since the middle of March. <laughs> of last year. Residents or visitors that come have to be, if they have extra, you know, records of their vaccination, that's fine, but all are encouraged to have a, 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 a COVID test when they come in the building with a rapid, trend, you know, rapid response of 20 minutes or so to get the clearance. And then they can go up, they have to wear protective equipment and can go up and see their, um, their resident or their family member or friend, whoever is there. Um, so that's a good, that's a step in the right direction. They have to arrange these visits in advance. You can't just wander in. You need to have called the social worker or the recreation people and let them know you're coming in in advance of coming in. But it's working well, and we just started that this week. The second thing I want to let you know is that we're still working with SOMOS Community Care in bringing the vaccination to the, uh, in, the, in the environment where people have no money and cannot get vaccinated. <laughs> and um, the, other, the third thing I want to let you know is that we've had some clinics, uh, uh, vaccination clinics that have developed. We've made it available to family and friends of the residents. So, and we got quite a good response of people that came in and were able to get vaccinated. So that's about it. I just, I will forward this to you as well. Yeah, what, what, what percentage of the uh, residents are now vaccinated and, and, and the employees? What, do you know the percentages? No, I, 
didn't get a chance to get that. I do know it's over 75% of the residents have been vaccinated. The reason you have some that don't is that they either don't want it or they can't sign for themselves or family members don't want to be involved. So, you know, family, somebody might have a, a dementia and be agreeable to it technically, but then that's not their, that's not their call as a family member. Family member tells us no, we have to comply with the family member. So the other thing I'll tell you is residents come in, they're tested for COVID, they come from a hospital typically, they're tested for COVID, and they, I, I haven't said this in personal experience, I have a family member who just transferred from a hospital into Isabella, and one of the first things they asked me is, did he have the COVID-19 shot? And I said, no. They go, what are you, what's your intention? I said, as soon as he can get it, give it to him. And he's okay. I mean, he's okay mentally, but he has had some brain injury because of this recent accident. So he's in and out of clarity. And then, you know, the, one of the first things they did was call me on the phone and ask about that. So, you know. Uh, and and are, are the employees getting vaccinated as well? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I will get to the numbers of how many employees have been okay. vaccinated. I didn't have that. Oh, yeah, I well, know, yeah, I know it was what? what it was last month, but I, I need to update that. I'm okay, sure. and over, but over seventy-five percent of the residents have now been vaccinated. So yeah. that's is it, that, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, but I'll double check that number. I didn't. I wasn't in the office today, so I, I okay. want to make sure to explain that. That's my understanding, but I could be off right. because we All have. Right. A, Constant change in residents coming into short stay. We have some passing away. Right, right. Yeah. All right, very good. All right, well, you managed to get your report in. Very good. Okay. All right. All right, so uh, uh, unless uh, unless somebody's going to object, it's now 9 o'clock, and I would like to adjourn the meeting. Um, I second that. Uh, you, you, you second it. Very good. Okay, thank you, uh, everyone, for coming. And uh, we'll meet again uh, on Thursday, June 3rd. And we uh, may or may not have a, a presentation about uh, COVID-19 and uh, mental health equity and resilience uh, at that time. I'll, uh, ke I'll keep you all posted. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Uh, take care. Bye.